Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was muted as well and I was speaking to you and you were muted, subhanAllah. Uh, all right, okay, so um, my apologies to everyone who has been waiting. It's not Imran's fault, it's not Anis's fault, it's my fault. I'm in Yorkshire, I was at my mum's house at the internet. There is very, very slow, so I had to rush to my sister's and that delayed everything. So I please accept my humblest apologies. And inshallah, uh, today's stream, um, as mashallah, uh, much of, many of you know, is the open forum. Uh, and this stream, mashallah, allows uh, more flexibility in terms of people joining uh, and asking questions about uh, our religion. Now, generally, we want Christians to come in and ask us about aspects of the Bible or Christianity or Islam. And we'd be happy to talk about that. It's more of an open platform. Um, and yes, if Muslims want to come on as well, we might li- allow you on if there's a chance. But generally, because it's a Sunday stream, um, it is in place of the uh, historicity stream. And uh, currently we're doing the uh, prophecies of the Old Testament. Uh, and since we're not doing that today, uh, Brother Ijaz is uh, doing Dawa, alhamdulillah, at um, a festival in 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 uh, in in Canada, so uh, you know he's unable to, uh, to 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 join us. So today we've done the open forum. Uh, if you'd like to come on, please remember that the link is below the video, and also uh, we should put it in the chat uh, now and again, so you can copy it off the chat uh, to make it easy for you to come on. Uh, Doctor Ron, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair. So uh, I just to re-emphasize, although it's it's for, this is for everyone, ideally non-Muslims, to come on and uh, have a discussion, inshallah. Um, but alhamdulillah, you're doing very well. How are you doing, Abbas? You, you okay, mashallah? Good alhamdulillah, trip. I'm absolutely fine, alhamdulillah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, alhamdulillah. I, I, must, I must admit that I really enjoyed the stream uh, with uh, Dawa Wise that they did a few days ago. Um, and it was fascinating. The Cardiani stream. The Qadiani stream. Yeah, some people going through that. It was phenomenal, mashallah. It was but phenomenal. Was, is there another level? May Allah reward him. He, he truly is on another level. And, and subhanAllah, what was very nice about that stream was that it was a really a, a very steep learning curve. Uh, clearly, uh, Brother Imtiaz and Brother Adnan have done in, an incredible amount of research uh, when it comes to um, you know what Qadianis believe, and um, and what their what their own scriptures, what their own books actually say, and I have found it very very informative and very very interesting, and also quite telling really. Um, so yeah, so uh, alhamdulillah, you I know, mean, even if um, our Qadiani, uh, you know, brothers in humanity want to come on, and they want to talk about aspects of that, we'd be happy to engage, inshallah. Um, but yeah, we've already actually got quite a few people already backstage, uh, guys. If you want to come on, though, please do remember that we do need to have your cameras on so we can verify you. Uh, once we verify you and engage with you, uh, we can at that point, inshallah, ta'ala, um, you know, um, get you on, and then of course you can switch your camera off before you come uh, before you come live. Um, uh, so that makes it easy if you want to obviously remain uh, you know anonymous you don't want to uh, you know be shown so if you have your cameras on i'm having a little bit of uh, issues with this laptop in terms of how do i scroll down to see um the rest of the people who ah, here we are okay. okay i've got that okay so we've we've not none of you've got your cameras on guys if you want to come on please have your cameras on so we can at least talk to you and verify you uh, it is obviously for safety reasons we don't want to uh, issues whereby, you know, potentially we're legally liable because we've shown something inappropriate or whatever. Uh, so if you'd like to come on, uh, please have your cameras on. Um, and if you're not prepared to have your cameras on, please don't fill up the backstage. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get you on. We're not going to be able to get you on. So unless your camera is on, we're not going to be able to do that for you. Um, yeah, so Dr. Imran, it was really, really interesting uh, Rob, if you want to put your camera on, we get you on, but you need to have your camera on, my my friend. Uh, we can't get you on. So, Timur, we'll let you get you on. We'll get you on, but just give us a quick wave, if that's okay. Quick wave, Timur. Lovely. We're going to get you on next, and then um, we'll, uh, inshallah, try to work through all the other people that are waiting. Uh, Timur, we get, welcome to the stream. Welcome. Thank you. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, you're coming through loud and clear. You, you're just coming through okay. now. Uh, Salam alaikum. Can you see Tima on your screen, Imran? Uh, I can't. Salam, uh, 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 brother. Yeah. <laughs> You've kept under the afraid. radar because uh, your name is Timur, and uh, this is really a stream for non-Muslims. I know, this... I know. <laughs> but uh, I really have been uh, suffering with one question, and I really can't find anyone to answer it. Can you see Timur? Because I can't see him. I just see a blank screen where he's supposed I to can be, see Timur, uh, Abbas. Oh, so it must be my my end here. Okay. Yeah. Can you see me, guys? Yeah, I can yeah. see you. I can see you. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I know you're prioritizing Christians, and uh, I won't take much time. So uh, I just have one quick question. As a Muslim, um, there are many things that I don't know or I haven't, you know, found the answers to. So uh, yeah, if you could just answer, just help me out to find out the answer for this one particular case, it would be really helpful. Okay, Tim, uh, what we're going to do is because we because what's happening now is we're we're away from the function of the stream, so we're making an exception, and I don't want the exception to become the rule. Yeah, so what's going to okay. happen is uh, so you can ask your question no problem. If it's something mm. that we think is no problem, you know, we can just get something for you now. If it's more than that, we're going to invite you back to the D. We have two streams specifically for Muslims. Oh one really? A, I didn't know about it. One is a, a doubt busting stream, which seems like where your question might be coming from. Okay, well, I will ask it. It's a dowry-related okay. stream for Muslims. So, but by all means, go go uh, go ahead and ask your question, and then we'll go from there. Yes. So, uh, in Islam, there are some things are forbidden, and one of those things is, of course, like uh, drawing images or sc uh, making sculptures, particularly so drawing eyes. Right? It's a big issue. You can draw an eyes. Because in the judgment day, or uh, you're going to be asked to bring those creatures that you drew to life. Uh, I understand it, but I was another day. I was looking for uh, learning about our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, I saw his swords. His like his battle swords. He has around nine of them, and one of those swords. It's called Al Mathur. They all have different names. And this particular sword, it has the handle in shape of, uh, it has like two heads, like creature heads. I don't know if it's dragon or what it is, but it has eyes on it, it has teeth. So uh, I was really surprised because I thought in, in Islam there's no drawings, no, scul uh, no like sculptures or anything. And I know the reason, so the people don't start, you know, praying or like, you know, obeying these sculptures. But why do, why did our prophet, Solo Alusalam, had the sword that has these creatures so, like understand. in it? I, yeah, I understand that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So I, I, what you can do, because I, I really doubt that what you saw was the sword of the prophet, peace be upon him. I mean, I've been, where did you see this? Which country was it in? Uh, you can just Google it. It's it's oh, no, named which Al Mathur. Country? Which country did you see it in? Which country? Yeah. Which where uh, did you see it's the online? Okay. If you if you type just Prophet Swords, it's gonna come up. It's one of his nine swords, like uh it okay, is so filled what, with I the think, gems. I think it will be useful to do. Uh let's because I I I d I I'm not sure what you're saying is correct. So Googling stuff on the internet, yeah, I mean, that's basically an internet image you're showing and you're saying that this is, <laughs> this is you know, you're, then you're attributing this with certainty to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And so I've been to places where they say, this is the staff of Moses. Go there and they go, wow. When you go somewhere else, they show, so this approach. if you're going to Google stuff and then take that as uh, this is something authentic, so the first thing you need to do is you need to authenticate the doubt to start with. Am I having an issue about something I've Googled and someone's given an image that may not be actually what the Prophet Peace Volume had? So what I would suggest you do, we have two streams, a Doubt Buster stream and a, um, a stream uh, which is called for, for Dower related purposes. What I'd like you to do, so we, and we, it's usually on a Wednesday evening. What I'd like you to do, look, do some research into the image that you saw 
mm-hmm. or authent- get as much evidence for you that would authenticate it, and then come and then we'll have a discussion at that point. Then we'll give you the time. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I just want to say at the end that uh, uh, watching your streams and your live, many Muslims learn a lot. So you're doing a great job. Uh, like Thank so. you for 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 your time and uh, yes. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. I, I think that's a very important point, mashallah, that you raise, um, Imran, because um, even uh, I know famous museums around the world, I'm not going to name them because I might offend people, but they say, oh, this is the artifacts of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the artifacts of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you've got to be very, very careful because many of them actually end up not being necessarily those artifacts that were actually at the time of the Prophet. So that's something that we need to be very careful of. And and in Islam, you know, what we don't do is, and we, we're not allowed to do, is just because people might find some form of exhilaration and happiness of seeing something that they attribute to the Prophet. So if it's a lie, we're not allowed to do that. Uh, so we're not allowed to lie about things and pretend that these things are. So uh, it, the brother Timur might have obviously in good faith, he may have found this and he may have thought, yes, this this sounds reasonable. But inshallah, yeah, investigate it and, and establish it first. And I think you might find, like Dr. Imran is saying, many of these artifacts that are attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually are not, um, they're not authentic. Uh, but okay, that's Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you to Brother Timur for coming on. Inshallah, we'll try to look into that as well. And he, I suppose he could email us as well uh, with the photos and where he found it. I mean, if one of us has time, Inshallah, we can perhaps go through those as well. Um, so I've got Adam uh, waiting. Adam, can you just give me a thumbs up? Adam, can you give me a thumbs up? Adam, can you give me a quick thumbs up or a wave? Can you hear me, Adam O'Flynn? Yeah, that doesn't look uh, that doesn't look uh, very good there because Adam doesn't seem to be responding to anything I'm saying. Uh, so, Adam, we might not be able to get you on, my friend, because I need to have a, a, a small conversation with you just to establish who you are. And uh, if you don't respond. Uh, it doesn't matter what you write in the private chat or anywhere else. I, oh, I can you hear me? Yeah. And it seems to be running on repeat. So it's just doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Um, good try, Adam. Better luck next time, mate. Uh, Rob, can you give me a quick thumbs up? Oh, no. Rob, thumbs up. Lovely. Rob, we're going to get you on for only a very, very short period because I, I, I suspect it's going to be painful. Uh, for, for for the listeners and for for us as well, but let's just see how it goes, Rob. Hi, Abbas. Long time no speak. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? You look like you've uh, grown a bit of a beard. Yeah. I, oh, mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I I do like a little bit of a beard. I do like a little bit of a beard, nice. like yourself and the doctor. Uh, good, good. Look, I won't beat around the bush. Um, I wanted to ask you what your opinion is on Quran Surah um, 65 Ayah 4 and so and and it's actually your namesake so I wanted if you could go to the to the Surah and the Ayah and uh, tell me initially can you, can you just repeat, repeat the reference again Rob uh, yeah Surah 65 yeah. I, uh, I, uh, four. Okay. 65, four. So, yep. so what's your opinion of it, Rob? Well, you know, um, I, I was quite shocked with this because. Were you, were you really shocked? Were you so shocked that, you know, your hair stood on end and you actually grow a beard or. <laughs> because you're always quite you're always quite shocked and this is like an old one of the mill standard christian polemic no, i know i know but times. we we, why, why we never like we never think to get to the crux of it and and i feel like i've got the answer to the crux of it oh please so why don't you why don't you present the problem and present the answer and we'll go from there rob yeah 
Um, I mean, you know, don't forget, Doctor, we had that great discussion about um, 86 7. The, Rob, you know, Rob, Rob, make your point on so this one. Rather than, can, rather than I, trying I, to talk about I, I, okay. some, so, some old discussion, because I can't even remember the last time I spoke with you, to be honest. So, if you. So why, don't if you, you uh, why don't you. Why don't you. Because okay, I, you're so making. Refers, you're, one second, Rob, just give me a second. Because what you're doing is a little bit of a. I don't know why. Just be straightforward. This is the, am, these are the words. I am. This, I'm trying to uh, tell you. These are the words. This is my problem with it. Okay. Um, and All then right. give us your solution. Tell me what your solution is. What What's your magnanimous Christian solution to this? Oh, okay. So the 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 um, this ayah refers to the waiting time for for women and uh, now I know that a lot of people they argue. Oh, this just refers to women. But if you go to Taft and Abbas, this, this is your namesake. If you go to Tafsir Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet, then you, it, it makes it clearer, and it actually does say, "Girls." Sorry, tafsir, tafsir Ibn Abbas. Yeah, and it What's actually that? does say girls that are too young, who have but, not had their menstruation. Rob. Uh, what is Tafsir Ibn Abbas? Tell me what that is. Well, it's, it's one of the Tafsirs. So, is it, where, where is that Tafsir? I, I didn't want to mention. I didn't want to mention Jalalain because there's there's a lot of Muslims that don't accept Jalalain. No, what, what's Tafsir Ibn Abbas? Tell me what that is. Well, it's the you know one of the explanation of the ayahs. Um, and it's quite, no, reliable. Uh, it's Rob, quite reliable. Rob, it's quite Rob, reliable. Rob, wait, Rob, it's quite reliable for the chain. It's quite reliable for the chain because Rob, it goes to me. back to Rob, obviously the, the cousin of the prophet. Rob, listen to me. Uh, there is no Tafsir Ibn Abbas going back to the prophet's cousin, peace be upon him. Well, I, I've brought this. Listen, this, listen to my, listen to my, Rob. Listen to my words very carefully. I brought this no, up with many, many words, Muslims, Rob, and they immediately Rob, recognize it, Doctor. Rob, listen, listen to me. There is no Tafsir Ibn Abbas going back to the Prophet, peace be upon the Prophet's cousin, peace be upon him. Because uh, you, what you, because you have to understand what you're claiming. Are you throwing it under the bus? No, there's, no. Hear my words before you, because th this is now a tactic to avoid the conversation we're having. Do you understand? Because if I start to talk about Christianity and you and you you dis you dis please you do, please do, please you disregard do. you one second, I'm trying to make a point, and you're getting different. Because if this is not going to be fruitful, then Rob, go and troll somewhere else. Because I'm not interested. Uh, no, no, no. I'm trying to, I'm I'm trying to get trolling. to a point. So no, listen no, to me. No, I'm not so trolling. Listen. This, Rob, this is your this Rob. is your um Rob. this is your salvation Rob, here. Listen, listen to me. The salvation is not based in the death of God on the cross. Salvation is based well, on the fact your that opinion. God has the, salvation is based on the fact that God can forgive you. Do you understand? Now you don't believe God can forgive you, which is why you need the death of someone on the cross. Now you you can you can throw the forgiveness of God under a bus if you want to. I, I don't do that. Now I'm using your tactics on you to demonstrate why it's not useful to have these types of conversations. Do you understand? Are you throwing him under? Are you throwing God's forgiveness under a bus, Rob? Is that what you're doing? I, I, I've heard Muslims throw Jalalain under you, the bus. Are you throwing God's forgiveness? Ibn Abba, do you believe Yahweh cannot forgive? Not sin? the cousin of the prophet. Well, uh, not Rob, the cousin of the prophet. That's you, a good uh, tafsir. As far as I'm aware, Rob, you don't believe that God can forgive sin. Is that what it is? You, someone has to well, die. Well, in the Old Testament. We you see. don't believe that God can forgive sin. Someone has to die. There's no other way. Blood is all that's needed. Are you well, throwing God's it, forgiveness under the sin? Where is all this love and mercy you talk about, it, Rob? For the Jews, as a for Christian, Jews, I'm really because that really shocks me. I'm so shocked by this. Well, for Judaism, it was more to do with animal sacrifices what, and guess, stuff. What did God relieve, reveal two different religions to all of His people? So there was another religion called Judaism, and then the separate religion called Christianity. What but God was people, one in one religion, and then He was three in another religion. What? This but is really amazing, God... Rob. I'm really shocked by this. Okay. What's your solution Let's to that there. problem, Let's... Rob? Yeah. Can you tell how me your solution to that problem? Abraham? How did God forgive can, Abraham and can Noah? Can you tell me your solution of that problem? How did God forgive Noah and Abraham? Rob, do you understand what's happening here, Rob? I'm giving you, I'm giving you a taste of your approach to interaction. It's not Look, useful. It doesn't we, help. We we believe there Rob, has to listen, be a sacrifice Rob, gonna, in the transaction. Rob, listen to me. If you want to have a discussion. 
There has to be a sacrifice in the transaction, otherwise it becomes meaningless. Rob, 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 one second. Rob, one second. Rob, one second. Imran, Imran, just one second. Rob, the reason why we don't normally get you on is because it normally ends up in the same way over and over again, where rather than ask a question and actually wait for the other person to address it or to answer it, you will constantly make these little digs, which are disrespectful. Are you throwing him under the bus? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? You can't have a civil, sensible discussion. And that's because why, Rob, we don't really... That's why, Rob, that's, Rob, the conversation. Rob, Rob, you're interrupting me now as well. And the thing is, I, I'd like to get you on. I'd like to have your questions, I, because you obviously have worked on this. You've studied it. You've gone away. You've gone onto websites. You know, bring this up with Muslims. They're going to get really stuck. This is going to be one of those checkmate moves. So we, I'm happy for to, to, to deal with those moves, Rob. Totally happy to deal with them. Because Alhamdulillah, we're confident in our, in our religion. The point is, the point is, when Imran is speaking, let him speak. And then by all means, bring your contention out. But at least let the other person have an opportunity to explain what you've brought up. Okay, is that, so is that fair? Yeah. That, 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 gonna, that's yeah. exactly how it should be done, Abbas. Okay, so let Imran speak now. We're not going to throw Go that uh, principle under the bus then, Rob. Yeah, we'll stick with that one. Yeah. So what's really important now, Rob, for you to do, and I'm not going to I'm not going to move forward on this discussion until you evidence for me that the that there is a book called the Tafsir of Ibn Abbas that is goes back to the Prophet's cousin, peace be upon him. I'm going to put you in the waiting area. You can wait in the lounge for as long as you like. And then once you've got it, just put a message in the private chat and I'll bring you up. And you can, and then I want you to show it to us. So make sure you have a have it there and you can show it to us and we'll go from there, Rob. Is that fair enough? That's that's fine. That's fine. No problem. All right. So I'm going to put you in the back chat now. Yep. Find the yep. Tafsir Ibn Abbas and authenticate that it goes back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And then we'll bring you up and we'll discuss that verse. Is that fair enough? Yep, that's perfectly right. fine. Speak to you soon, Rob. Okay, so it's really important because <laughs> there is a there is a, a tafsir that's falsely attributed to Ibn Abbas, which he, which is probably what he's referring to, and this is the problem. Uh, this is the problem that the, that he has to go to a some obscure uh, place to try and make a, a, a point against Islam. And what did I do? I, I was just giving a demonstration of the of the, the the approach that he was taking by actually by actually dealing with a very fundamental point. And the fundamental point was God's ability to forgive sin. Now, if there was a, if there was a, uh, something that really was important, really was uh, something that was to do with your salvation, it would be to God being able to forgive your sin. The concept that the only way to remove sin is for someone to be killed and pay a blood price removes forgiveness from the transaction. And for me as a Muslim, I've struggled with this concept from in Christianity from day dot, and there's never been resolved. The, the that that's and that, so I gave a fundamental example just to illustrate what actually was going on. Um, but let's see what he comes up. We wait for him in the chat to make his uh, 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 declaration that he's found this uh, infamous uh, tafsir, and we'll go from there. So, uh, sorry, brother of us, carry on, please. No, no, I'm just saying that the other interesting thing is that I find it very odd when Christians bring up things about divorce or marriage or any of these things, because when you then ask them, what is the biblical legislation for this issue or this, uh, you know, this particular concept, and they're less, left speechless oh, it's just up to what society decides. Whatever the ruler decides, we, we, we just go with that, basically. So, alhamdulillah, in Islam, we don't have to do that. It's not something that simply moves uh, with society and uh, atheists can decide what your morality is and what your in injunctions are, or uh, agnostics can do that, or even idol worshippers, you know, can do that. And decide, you know, what all of your different legislation when it comes to marriage and divorce and the rights for women and for men and everything else. You you, you rely upon people for that. Alhamdulillah, we don't. Uh, we, and we can very easily an answer and talk about the verse. And inshallah, Imran, maybe it, uh, we will do, just so people are aware. 
that it's not like we're trying to sideline and not even talk about it. We're quite happy to discuss oh, no, it. I, but... I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it right now. Yeah. Very straightforward. So yeah. let me read the verse and then I'll explain. So this is, <clears> this is a, there, there's a, a insistence amongst Christians that they want, they insist that um, prepubescent girls are someone that you can uh, have intercourse with or you can marry and have intercourse with. Um, and this is, and one of the evidences that they produce is this verse, uh, which is a sur- in, in the chapter of divorce, so verse 60, Surah 65, verse 4. And as for your women past the age of menstruation, in case you do not know, their waiting period is three months. And for those who have not menstruated as well, as for those who are pregnant, and it goes on. Now, what they do is they take this, and for those who have not menstruated as well, and they insist that it means uh, prepubescent. This mm. is the insistent. Mm. Mm. And actually, this is not. This isn't the case. Now, yeah. the 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 point here is is that you, can you have somebody who is well into the ages of uh, eligibility for marriage, although the criteria for marriage isn't an age, but well into that, who has not yet started menstruation? Yes, of course yeah, you can. Exactly. Can you have fourteen year olds, fifteen year olds, sixteen year olds who haven't menstruated? Yes, you can. Yeah. And the fact that the eye covers this, it it does not mean at all what they insist on. Um, but they, this is what they want to bring. So this is why, rather than going to anything that's uh, more more mainstream, he has to go to something that's, you know, uh, uh, something that was written literally in the in the uh, the thirteenth century, um, and sorry, even later, maybe fifteenth century. Yeah. And he this and he's saying this is attributed all the way back to the prophets, cousin peace be upon him. Yeah. As and and it, it's sad. It's yeah. sad. You want to attack our a mechanism of salvation? You want to attack our concept of God? Go for it. This is this is a fundamental, fatal blow. Concept of salvation, fundamental, fatal blow. The Quran itself, in terms of its reliability, preservation, its miraculous nature, fu- mm. fundamental. But nothing like this. We yeah. attack the Prophet peace upon him, his character, his actions, how he interacted with people, what he did. In- fundamental points these are all fundamental points nothing like that but you're going to go on your way the, you know your book allows you to marry please we have in the yeah. in the old testament you have soldiers being told to check that the, that the girls hadn't slept with a man and hundreds, tens of thousands of them were taken that day yeah. and if you read into the any of the commentaries it's about women who have um uh, girl, girls who are over the age of three so I mean, literally, it's 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 really like a, you're pointing a finger, but three of them are pointing back at you, yeah. and not really relevant. Not really relevant. Applying to modern day standards to the past, yeah. as if that's yeah. uh, an effective way of, of dealing with things, and it's not. And not only that, Imran, but it applies yeah. to men. It applies to boys as well. So a boy in Islam, pubet, pub, pub, pubescent, a pubescent boy would be somebody who's either had an. Um, no, I think we're all grown ups here, so it's it's not really an issue. It's, it's quite late, you know. Either you have a wet dream, and 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 as a consequence, you would then be regarded as being pubescent. Now, some boys will grow up to sixteen and eighteen; they might not have had a, a wet dream. So, so to become an imam, to pray, to lead a farad, a compulsory prayer at the mosque, you can't have a minor. But sometimes you'll see boys as young as 12 and 13, they'll become the imam. Now, nobody's going to say, oh, you have to prove that, you know, you've had your wet dream or whatever. (laughs) It doesn't work like that. You know, a few hairs here and a bit of hair there. And basically the the boy says, yes, he has or whatever. There's a certain age. I think 14, if I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken. But if he reaches 14 or something or 15, 14 or 15, and he hasn't had, you know, he's not. But, you know, biologically had any function whereby he could establish it with certainty, he would be regarded as a balik. He'd be regarded as pubescent. So it's 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 that sort of it doesn't mean that uh, oh it can have it can be a six year old. It could be a seven year old. Or it doesn't mean that at all. So I, I think and as you said, Imran, I think. Um, in Islam, you will never find anything like what you will find in the Old Testament. When it comes to you know this type of this type of thing, oh, it's not. Um, it's it's more. It's uh, you're absolutely right. It's not really about. We're not comparing uh, the two. We're just looking at the approach, and the approach is really a disingenuous one. Uh, it's 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 not someone who's interested in actually coming to the truth or finding out, uh, and it's just someone who comes along. I'm really shocked 
No, really shocked by something that's been read a million times by the same person, and they found an answer, and then they and and then what's the answer in the obscurest, uh, falsely attributed thing that he's going to say that it's from the the cousin of the prophet peace upon him that it's about minors. <laughs> that, yeah. That's it. I, I mean, end of story, really. Where, where are you going to go with something with with any sincerity with something like this? Yeah. Be straightforward and have a straightforward discussion. Bring something yeah. that you know we would accept. So even so, we would not accept this explanation. It doesn't fit with any of the explanations that we have. We have criteria for marriage. You have to be someone who is considered by the society to be mature, and you have to be um, pre, uh, after. You have to it has to be after puberty or maturity. It can't be before this. Now, there's many many places where this is the case, and what, all that happens is that these guys are just. They can only throw mud now, and you know, hate as as brother Nazim, brother uh, uh, name said, a haters they're going to hate, and that's all that's happening here. So I'll let I'll let uh, Rob carry on uh, looking hunting. Hopefully he'll eventually find out uh, what's going on, and then come back to us. Until then, we can move on. Hopefully, is that is that all right? Yeah. Well, he seems to have uh, left the backstage. So because yeah, that's fine because he I'm knows he, he does know that actually there is no. Um, no way to um, to verify the, the claim that he made that there is a tafsir that goes back to the prophet uh, uh, prophet's cousin Abbas uh, and and, there, and it's interesting because what you're claiming now is that there is a text that was written in the time of the prophet peace be upon him yeah which we have access to now which is preserved mm. Mm. but he will deny the same possibility for the Quran. Anyway, you know it's, what? I'm going to get. In terms. Yeah. But anyway, let's let's anyway, move forward. I'm going to get somebody. Forward. Actually, I'm I'm actually quite fond of the guy. I actually like him. I know perhaps some of you might say negative things, but I'd like the chat to be respectful and nice. But I actually do like Esan. Esan, I'm going to get you on. Can you just give me a quick wave, Esan? Lovely. So I'm going to get you on next. I'm going to get you on now. Hi, hi there. Um, I don't really have much to say, but I was just saying I came to Speaker's Corner today and I was hoping to meet some of you guys. So oh, well, what you should, what Esan, what you should do you is email us, email us, and we'll we'll let you know because we're not there every week. We're there sort of sure. like um, every four or five weeks. And depending on, uh, you know, all the members in terms of work and being able to take day offs and stuff like that, we sort of have to juggle things a little bit. Um, but yeah, but we'd be happy to meet you there. And um, but just email us and then we'll. Probably we probably have your email actually. I think well, I think we do have your email, but just in case we don't, just, just email us and we'll definitely let, let you know when we're down there next. Uh, how still, are you like doing? It, no, I'm good, thanks. Hope you both are well. You're Thank doing you very well. well. You still working? Was there a specific Sam? question at all? Or no, no, that's fine. I was just uh, you know just wanted to say you know. Uh, so when are you coming back to something. Islam, Hassan? Come on, what's going on? No, no. <laughs> No, Hassan, no, you look too. like you're still at work. Uh, how, what's going on? I'm at home. No, I'm at home. you're at home. Are they, okay, um, no yeah, problem. It looks like know, a... not. I'm not long got off the train back from London. <laughs> okay, uh, so okay. So, yeah, no, busy. How work, can we you help know, you today, Hassan? What's tomorrow. happening in, in your? Uh, in your yeah, I'll be doing. Um, I'll be doing my own videos now. Um, I got told off for plugging my channel, but um, that's what I've been busy doing. Okay, uh, so it'd be quite. Oh, that's be quite fruitful. Is that from, from the atheist perspective? Is it? Mainly from the science stuff. I've been doing a lot of um, creationism debunking, that kind of thing. Okay. So, That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So it, what's it, your, it, what, what are you putting forward yeah. today? No, I was just, I mean, um, there was nothing specific. I just wanted to just, uh, you know, chat about how, you know, it would be really nice to talk in person. Yeah, no, it would definitely. Be. Yeah. 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 Would so be. we, we, if you've been there today, you know it can be a little bit of a sort of, a, you know, a yeah. science. So if you're going every week, it definitely wears on you. Uh, so we we tend to go every now and then, um, probably once a month at least. Yeah. And sometimes it can be more. Sometimes it can be less than that. So uh, just if you ever if you ever are going, and you want to check when we're there, just send us a message, and we're happy to let you know, and then we can interact. You. There seems to be a lot of crazy people standing on step ladders, screaming their lungs out, and yeah, I think it takes a certain amount of uh, you know. Uh, Socio sociopathology to be able to stand up and do that. So yeah, I'd have yeah, to agree sure. with you. Sure. Well, one of the things that I want to say, Esan, is that um, since you are obviously doing a website or a, or a YouTube channel, and you're going to be yeah. bringing up you know scientific errors in your research. What's the sort of biggest error that you think currently exists that sort of debunks creationists or, or, or re people of religion? 
Um, I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't really debunk religion because religion is something separate. It's just you know it's what the people believe. But when it comes to say creationism, a lot of the stuff that I'm beginning to find um, that comes across in these videos is a lot of arguments from personal incredulity. That's something where somebody just says, oh, I just can't see how this would happen. And that's not really much of an argument. Yeah. Um, and I, and you know, people have problems against evolution. Mm. And, and I say to them, well, uh, what else is there that has the evidence? And there's nothing. Uh, that really has any scientific evidence uh, that yeah. troubles it. But, that, but that's, I think that's a circular, I, th- I would respectfully say that's a bit of a circular position. Okay. Um, and the reason is, is that w- the fundamental principle in science is that there are no non-natural explanations. Well, that's methodological naturalism, yes. Yeah, but, so um, that's how it's that's how it's done. Yeah, so... Um, and so to to go from, to use that methodology... You're limited. You already just by having that as a fundamental framework. I'm not. I'm not saying the framework's wrong. I'm saying it's a good mm-hmm. method to use to find out about how uh, work, the world works in nature, with that with a paradigm of uh, within nature. Um, but it's not. It's not going to give you any answers beyond this. Um, so if you if you're going to look for any explanation, so if you were to go to anyone who is limited by that parameter, there are no non-natural yeah. explanations. Explain. Uh, the origin and the diversity of life on earth there's no other option uh, well, not that there's no other theories there are other theories of uh, evolutionary there are other ideas. actually the only the only explanation is uh, is some sort of evolutionary model and so it's it's almost like a circular thing yeah of course if you're going to look at if you're if you're looking for scientific evidence about how life is and how it evolved and where that's what that's the only answer you're going to come up with yeah, I mean, I did touch this in one of my videos where, um, you know, if you postulate it's supernatural, there are multitudes of supernatural claims. Your, your voice is a bit funny at the moment. Was it? Sorry, I'll try and speak up. Is that any better? Uh, it's sort of crackling. Is, is this me, Abbas, or is it crackling for you as well? It, it, it is crackling. I did I did uh, adjust your mic settings because it was very, very low. What I'll do is I'll just turn your mic settings down a little bit again. But if you can maybe just speak uh, closer to the um, to the to the microphone, maybe I don't know if that will help. Yeah, okay. try try now. Okay. Yeah, well, if um, we stop our, uh, our amplification and just put, turn your gain up on your mic, uh, Isan. Okay. I'll just put it back to automatic then on on Isan's mic, and then. Um, okay. Is that any different? It's the same. Actually, your 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 um. It's capping you, so your voice is cutting off when you speak. Up. I'll just I'll, I'll set it back to automatic. Let's see if that makes a difference, and then Hassan can maybe just speak a little bit closer into the mic. Try try now, Hassan. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll try, try and plug your mic a little bit more. Try and plug the phono thing in the auxiliary cable, plug fully, just in case it's not seated. Because now you've got your headphones on. Just plug yes. it, take it out, it and plug it. Be, in. Yeah, it seems to be crackling a bit, uh, quite a lot. Is that right now? Try. It. It was all right in the beginning, but yeah, um, it was all right. It's just suddenly try, got... try speaking, Hassan, and we can see what uh, what's going on. Yeah, you're just muted, Hassan. I don't know. Um, just start to unmute yourself, and then try. is that any better? I think just it's all right. We'll try and work. It's still there, but we'll we'll try and work. So if we if we don't quite hear you, then uh, just forgive our uh, assumptions. Okay. Um, let me try something different then. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe if you switch the microphone to something there, else. There might be something supernatural going on. Uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> is that any different? That that sounds different? A bit, I think it might be a bit better. Yeah, go on. That might be better. Okay, I'll switch from the microphone to the webcam. Okay. Okay, so that's any better. So, yeah, I think I touched on this in one of my videos where basically where you have super natural claims, you can have multitudes of supernatural claims and different sources, and you, there's no way of differentiating between one or the other. So I'll just hold off judgment until there is a way of differentiating. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the point. So you're saying that because there because there could be a multitude of claims... It's not, what, what was your... 
no way of differentiating. Yeah, maybe Esan. Esan, just jump out oh. and um, jump back, back in, in yeah, again. Yeah. Let's see if that makes a, a difference. Maybe we'll uh, it, because it's, it really is very bad. The sound is hardly coming through. So just end up leave. Okay. Just leave the stream and then enter the stream again, and maybe that might I'll just sort again. it out. All right. Yeah. All right, we'll try that. Okay. All right, son. We'll see you in a, we'll see you in a, in a minute or whatever. Inshallah, hopefully. Uh, Yoji Boji, if you want to just uh, give us a quick wave, that's lovely. We'll get you on next, and then we'll uh, let Esan leave and then come back in again, uh, uh, and then hopefully that might clear things up a little bit. Uh, Yoji Boji, welcome to the stream. Can you hear us? Oh, I've got the wrong person on. Sorry. beg your pardon. Uh, Yoji Boji, I'm going to get you on next. Uh, sorry, I think okay. I accidentally. Okay, okay. Imran, my, 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 my phone seems to be lagging a lot. Can you it's get okay, okay. Cyril off and put Yoji on? Uh, Abbas, you've already done that. Oh, uh, yeah. so... So the problem is I've still got Cyril on my screen. I think my, my internet seems to be, or the laptop seems to be running super slow. Have, is Yoji is Yoji, Yoji's on the yeah, screen? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yoji, hi. How can we help you? I'm doing good. I'm doing very good today, you know. Yoji, um, can you hear us? Yes, I hear both of you guys perfectly. Lovely. One by one, yeah. So do you have a question at all, Yoji? I actually have two questions. Just two questions. I've I've not got this answered um answered from um anyone. Could you t could you tell me uh what what's your background, Yoji? What are you Muslim, so, Christian, atheist? What so, are you? So I I believe in a higher consciousness and that um I don't identify with any religion. So I'm basically spiritualist. What? Why do you believe in a higher consciousness? What's the point? Where did you get that? Where did you get that idea that there's a higher consciousness? Because I believe in a creator. Why do you believe in a creator? What's the reason? Because I guess um, because they they have to be a a cause for everything that's happening. You know. So there's so there's got to be a fundamental cause. And yes, do you attribute yes. anything to that creator? Or you said you said higher power, wisdom. What do you attribute yes. to that? Is it a wise being or not a wise being? So I, it, it's it's be it's basically be beyond my my comprehension of his attributes. So I, I can't. Is, is so what what is it? What from your spiritual perspective? What do you know so far about your creator? He's uh, in control of the whole universe and beyond. The observable universe and beyond, and the unobservable universe. Does he make mistakes? No, he he can't make mistakes. No. Because Does he do things for fun? Huh? Does he do things for fun? For his for his liking. For for point like pointless things. Uh, for 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 his liking for, for oh, no point for pointless things. Does he do stuff? things that are Does he do things that are pointless? No, it no. Okay. I mean, All I, right. I, 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 there's no reason for him to do do anything for a pointless reason. No. Okay, so there is a, there is a point for us being here, yeah. Yes, to serve him. Everything's supposed to serve him. How, how do you know that to serve him? How do you know that? Because the reason I asked that is because earlier on you said that there was no way to know anything about this creator, and now you're saying that actually is to serve him. And I'm asking you how how do you know? That this is to serve him. That you've been created to serve him. How do you know that? Because um, I was put in this body to. So I can't hear you. Your voice is really low. You you want to put the mic near your mouth? Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's it sounds really low. Uh, Can you hear me? Better. It's a little bit better. Uh, show. So just explain to me again, so I understand. So uh, I... how you know that your purpose of your creation is. Uh, to serve the, the creator because you're a spiritualist right yeah yeah so tell me what why so so um basically basically by 
by less less noise. Yoji, we can barely hear you. You need to sorry, just turn your mic settings up, or you need to speak right into the microphone uh, because it's 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 difficult to really hear hear you at all. Yeah. Your your voice is very low, Yoji. Okay. Um, well, okay. Can you hear me now? Better. It's it's really much the same. Can, is there like a is there a way to turn up the mic sensitivity or anything on your? I'll try to turn it up from here. Um, yeah. Okay, try speaking now. Right. Turn you, right. turn your volume up. Okay, uh, go for it, Yoji. Okay, you can hear me now. A bit better, yeah. Okay, so so you were yeah, going to explain uh, to us how you know your the purpose that you were created for is to serve the Creator from a spiritualist so, perspective. Yeah. So in in um in um the in um in basically but by not knowing by not knowing you know by not knowing so, so, you know. Uh, but yoji because now you're just saying things that don't make sense do you no, know what a, uh, do you know what an underwater hair dryer is yoji hmm? do you know what an underwater hair dryer is uh, 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 i'm trying to make i'm trying to make make it clear clearly state, stated so i i do meditation and yoga so when you well, why do you do, why do you do why do you do meditation and yoga? That's that's for connection. That's connection for two. How, how do you know that? Higher. How do you know that that's a way to connect? Because that that's what that's what uh, at a at a fundamental level, that's how the the awareness is. That's how how do you know? How do you? So there's a problem here. I, I'm trying to I'm trying to highlight Yoji. So because you you said that there's a creator, you believe in one, and then you gave yeah. a reason that there has to be a reason for the creation to exist, and that's yeah. why you believe in the creator. Yeah. And then you said that there's. I said, do you know anything about this creator? And you said there's no way to no. know anything about this creator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you said that the purpose of our creation. I asked you what was the. He doesn't do. I, it doesn't do anything for jokes. Uh, and mm -hmm. so the purpose of the creation is to. Uh, you said was to serve him. Yeah. So then I asked you, how did okay. you come to this conclusion? Yeah. And then you okay. said that, but then you made a strange statement. You said, by not knowing, you know. Now that is, yeah. uh, yeah. with all re with all due respect, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm first time I'm speaking with you. Mm -hmm. You can't say that. You can't say that, assuming that that makes sense to anybody, because uh, you know, I, I, it's I, it's I, not it's a it's a really a nonsensical statement. Which is why I gave you the example of the underwater hair dryer. Okay. Then you okay. moved on from that. I'm just laying out the conversation. I want you to understand where we're coming from. Then you okay. moved on because everyone in the chat is saying you're a troll. I'm trying to give you the I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here. Then you moved on to say that you meditate, and I said, "Why are you meditating?" You said, "Because it's a way to connect." And I said, "How do you know that that's the way to connect?" Okay. Because the point here is is that you're making claims about connecting to that one. Uh, how to connect to that one, what our purpose is, whilst okay. at the same time saying you know nothing about that one. Okay. And these two, thi these two things, these groups of things are not reconcilable. Okay. Do you understand the point I'm coming with? Okay. So, okay. So, so why don't you, why don't you explain to us uh, how you know your purpose is this and how you know that the method that you're using to connect to that creator is the correct method? And actually, the, so those two questions make it simple. Okay. For example, uh, when when you're looking at when you're watching. Right, Imran. Um, I think we're going to have to call it a day here. We've been trying for the last. Yes, I'm really sorry. We can't hear you. Your yeah, voice is sort of going in and out. So it, it, what we're going to do is working. we're going to ask you to uh, sort your mic out and then come back to the stream. Yeah, so this is really important. I just want to highlight this conversation because even though it was not much of a conversation, it was really. Uh, that it really a lot of things came out of it. So what came out of it was very interesting. Mic issue, <laughs> the mic issues was not, not interesting, but what came out was very interesting. So the first thing, claim to accept that there's a creator, great. Try to get to the reasons why, because there's only way to explain how we exist. There's no other real reasonable explanation 
of the existence of the universe and us. Fine, we fundamentally agree on that. What do you know about this creator? There's no, there's no, there's no way to know anything about this creator. But he said that he was wise, which is good. He said that he doesn't do things for jokes, which was good. Then, then we moved on. He said, and I said, well, what's the purpose? If he doesn't do anything that's a joke, then why are you? Why are we recreated? What's our purpose? Then he moved to the. He said the purpose was to serve him. So now we're on a uh, claim about knowing the 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 reason why the creator created us, and when you and that's why I delved into this. How do you know this? And and then he moved on to claims about meditating being a mechanism of connecting with the creator, and these are all now. This is all built on not knowing. He doesn't know. And then he said, you know, because you don't know, which is, I mean, that's just, you know, uh, underwater hairdryer talk, right? I mean, you can have an underwater hairdryer, but it's not, it's not really going to do very much. Um, my apologies for my camera. <laughs> it, it's doing this thing where it uh, focuses and unfocuses. Uh, I've got no idea. I need someone technical to sort it out for me. We'll try and get it sorted out for next time. So uh, apologies for take for that two pound comment. Okay. Does that look like a <laughs> Um, somebody actually paid to get that comment out there. <laughs> so the important you don't have to pay to get your comments brothers and sisters just you can comment if you pay if you anything that's provided to this channel it goes towards that we're we're not we're not a profit organization everything yeah, goes yeah. towards the hour so uh, you know feel you know don't be worried by that but the real point the real point of that discussion was if he's claiming that he uses um if he uses meditation to connect with this the, you have to tell us how you know how you know this and the reality is the only way you know how to interact with the creator what the creator wants from you what our purpose is is by that creator communicating this is the only way because otherwise you can't make a claim about knowing the the thoughts or the minds of what how you know that maybe those phrases aren't appropriate but the, what god intends the the only way is the communication and we believe in the communication Allah says he sent messengers and we there are people who've claimed to be messengers uh, in different times and locations and different languages in different cultures and generally speaking they will talk about the one God who sent them with commandments and the commandment mainly is worship God alone without partners so for me that was a really interesting uh, way of trying to get to y Yoji went on to have mic issues and he wasn't speaking up and you know that's that's unfortunate but ultimately this is where we were trying to take the conversation so i think that's that was a even though it's short it was very useful and shall i when you have these interactions with the spiritualists to get them to explain why they believe whatever they're doing is what they should be doing uh because they're making a claim about knowing about what god wants from us or uh intends for us etc uh, sorry i was just going to summarize that about no, no, that's quite all right. And I think the, uh, one of the other things I, I noticed with some, some people is that when you speak, it's got to make sense. <laughs> We've got to understand what you're saying. I mean, if it's just something that you understand, but everybody else is thinking that that's just gibberish, then, I mean, where do we go with that? How can we have even have a discussion? Um, so there's lots of you backstage. It's almost a full house back there, but none of you have got your cameras on. And um, uh, for us to get you on quickly, uh, we need your cameras on so we can at least interact with you. Um, otherwise, we, we won't be able to get get you on. So please have your cameras on when you're backstage. Uh, you can turn them off uh, before you come on. Um, but if your camera is off, we won't be able to get you on, I'm afraid. So that's uh, that's going to be a, a huge issue, a huge problem for us. Um so as I say, uh, yeah, if you'd like to come on, uh, please please have your cameras on so we can at least verify you. Imran, if you can verify people for me, because my uh, internet is uh, very slow for some reason, or my, my laptop is running super slow. Um, so if you can get the next guest on once you verify. Sure, I'll do. Uh, uh, there's a gentleman called Proofy25. If you want to just wave for me, please. Proofy25? Just wave for me. You're blinking a lot of the screen, can you? But you're not actually doing anything, Amar. So if you're going to wave at the screen, or put up, put up three fingers for me. Three fingers. Three, three fingers. Three, that's that's not three fingers. Three fingers, Proofy. Three fingers. Three, three fingers. 
Okay, great. So I'm going to get bring you on proofy, and uh, you can turn your you can turn your camera off if you want to, and we can go from there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. You can stop with the fingers now. <laughs> proofy, welcome, welcome to the stream. Can you hear us? Hello. <clears throat> Proofy, can you hear us? Yeah. I just think there was a lag or something. Yeah. Okay. Hello? Can you hear me now? Hello? Okay, so I'm going to remove you because I think there's a yeah, big lag. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, so uh, this... yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think this lag isn't going to make the conversation... Uh, Unviable, uh, inviable, or however you want to phrase that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, because there is too much of a lag. Um, so why don't you try and uh, check back in, and then we can try and bring you on again. Uh, hopefully, the lag will delay, uh, will go away. Okay, I'm gonna remove you from. I'll believe in the back chat. So that's so there was an issue there, and that issue was that um, the delay in the lag was not going to make a conversation happen. Uh, we would have been talking past each other. Uh, so proof, proof you. Feel free to step out of the stream and then come back into the stream and then we'll get you on. Um, is, that, is that Timothy? Ah, Timothy. That's, uh, so, uh, apologies for anyone waiting, but Timothy's uh, someone that we know. We're going to bring them on the stream for a moment. Okay. Uh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Timothy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Yourself? Not too bad. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, uh, you're looking. You're looking uh, well. Is everything okay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gone um, great. So I had a good, um, good, uh, good year. Good reset. So it's been been really, really good. Great, excellent. Uh, Abbas, can you hear? Can you hear Timothy as well? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Well, so Timothy, you what? Uh, you, I think you've been in touch with Abbas a, a couple of times, probably more than myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Nazam actually. Nazam's been um, yeah. giving me a few videos to watch as well. It's been great. N Nazam's excellent. Uh, I just want to put a comment up from uh, Brother Sergio. So whilst that's uh, whilst that's there, we'll just uh, uh, put that away now. We're still waiting for the Dasir of Ibn Abbas from uh, Rob to bring whenever he wants. Um, so, so Tim, what what brings you to us today? Um, um, well, you guys are doing the Old Testament series at the moment. So we had we were going through some of the uh, prophecies Daniel seven Daniel nine. Uh, yeah, we, we did a couple of streams on them. Um, yeah. yeah. So th how can we help with them? Is that something you want to ask about? Or yeah, yeah. Well, there was a, there was a couple um, that I was looking at, and um, I went on another stream with Nizam. Uh, this was a few months ago, anyway. Um, okay. And there was a question, but it sort of didn't get answered. I, kn I know that you would do a um, a better job. Of it, it was Genesis four one, um, and it says uh, it's a very interesting verse that um, Rob Rob brought up. Rob, uh, uh, our friend, a mutual friend, Rob. Or? Yeah, 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 that one. Uh, okay. Rob uh, from Sentinel Apologetics, um, and he asked me about it because it was in in Hebrew. It's very interesting. Hey, Nazan. Oh hey, Timothy. Hey. How are you going? <laughs> you know, <Where> can I... <laughs> this, this is really good because um, now you have the benefits of someone who really knows knows Christianity well as well. So this is great, uh, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> so Genesis, you were saying Genesis. Uh, uh, Nazam, how are you? Salam alaikum, brother. You well? Uh, sorry, wa alaikum salam, brother. So I'm fine, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Well, nice to see you, mashallah. Well, thank you. So Timothy's just come on. We, uh, he, he wants to talk about a prophecy in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, Nizam, I had this with um, that other, if you remember, it was a few months ago, but you might remember. It was um, that other stream that you were on that you invited me on to. I don't know if you remember that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been so long, you even look different. I, I didn't uh, yeah, recognize you. Yeah, yeah, I've gained a bit of weight. It's been good. Yeah, you look, you, you look like oh, you put I can't on. Tell. You look, I, I, yeah. I just said you look well. I didn't want to say that you were getting caught. <laughs> <on anything. laughs> it's a good thing. No, it's good. 
So uh, I remember last time we were talking with the bus, the bus was like, you keep eating like that, you're going to gain some weight. And uh, he, I guess he was right. So. <laughs> Excellent. So do you want to talk us through this, uh, the prophecy yeah. that we can try and help you with uh, if we so can? What it, what it appears like is that um, Eve has been told uh, how this um, salvation from what they've done wrong will come about. And so uh, it reads, um, it's because uh, Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I've gotten, I've gotten the man, or man, with the help of, See, it doesn't say, see, in English it says, with the help of the Lord. But in Hebrew, it just says, et Yahweh. So, like, do you, do you know what the et is in Hebrew? No. Oh, okay. I thought Imran, um, no. Might is it, is it some know. kind of preposition? No, no, no. It's what it is. It's just a. It's a, a indicator of uh, the definite, uh, the main subject. So, for example, oh, in okay. uh, if I can give an example, uh, in Genesis, Genesis chapter one, it says, "Bereshit um, bara Elohim et elorets." So the um, the et is talking about the Hashemayim. So it's just saying that God created the heavens, not the heavens created God. So it's the it's the um, it's the pointer to say what the the main subject is, um, to say where it is in this in the the line. Oh. So be it in in okay. any order, and you'll know what the the main subject is. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's basically saying. Uh, let me read it in Hebrew. Sorry. And she bore Cain, and she says, "I've gotten man. I've gotten the man Yahweh." So it appears, uh, or a lot, or what a lot of scholars are saying anyway, um, is that. Um, she believes that that this, yeah, perfect. She believes that this, um, this that the the salvation was going to come from from like a woman, but it would be God Himself that would be coming in through that way. So, how, so can you just because that's the seems I'm I'm just not so tell me how you've arrived at that say that again so i can so we can see the text it says it says um adam knew eve yeah uh, uh, his wife and she yeah. conceived and bore cain so you got see just before cain it says et so yes yeah, so we click on et uh, yeah. so et is translated uh because et is here as well you see and it's translated yeah, yeah. as a preposition yeah. from yeah that's but it's not no. from the, the preposition from is actually min, so it's a mem and a nun, which makes the word min. Min is the word used from. It's not et. Et is never used as from. And in fact, um, they will drop the n and attach it to a word, and the mem will be attached to the word um, to say from this person or something like that. Um, so it's never et is is not um, doesn't mean from. So what does et, it, what are you saying that et means? Sorry, et I just want to understand the. Uh... Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, that's what I want to say. And if you look, if you look at that verse, if you look at that same verse, if you yeah. if you used it, if you if you go back to Cain, see it's used right before Cain. So you can't say and she bore, you know, from Cain. You'd have to use it in exactly the same situation right there. But basically, if you if you if you look this up or, um, not you you don't just have to take what i'm saying now maybe we can come back to it at another time but basically it's an it's an article that points to the direct subject so that um it can't say yeah it says here it says here the sign of the definite direct object 
That's right. Not translated in English, but generally preceding and indicating the accusative. So it's right. talk, we're talking about the objects of the verse, of the sentence. That's right. Yeah. Yes. So, so she bore right. Cain. Cain is the object. So the bearing yeah. is to Cain because she that's bore right. him. And that's what yeah. the it stands for. Yeah. And then I have acquired a man, Yahweh. See, it's just pointing. To, but they've put from because it doesn't make sense that she's bearing Yahweh. So they're, they, they're just assume they're like, well, we have to make it make sense. And it can't mean that she bore God. So that's why it's translated that way. But in the, in the original Hebrew, that's not what it says. So you're saying that this, so I just want to understand your understanding of it. Yeah. So you're saying, this is saying, I have acquired uh, the, the Kaniti here. Kaniti. Yeah. Yeah. That's I have acquired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a man. Yeah. 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 This you're saying means, uh, so you're saying this directs you towards the um, the thing that the, the this is yeah. directs you towards the thing that is acquired. Yeah. That's right. And you're yeah. saying that, so she's acquired. So she's saying that she's given birth to Yahweh. That's right. Well, that's what it's saying. That's what the verse is saying. So I, I want to because and and this is so you believe that this is a, a this is saying so because the, the translation here that this is the NET which is more of a literal yeah. translation. Now the man was intimate with his wife, so Adam was intimate with Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to God. And then she said, "I have cre I have created a man just as the Lord did." Well, just wait. Let me look at the. So, so what? So if you read the footnote here, Sorry. if you read the footnote here, it says. Uh, talking about this uh, here is another sound play a power it doesn't uh, created it doesn't say created a man it created I so I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to read the comment in net it says sure. here is another sound play on a name the sound of the verb uh, garniti i have created reflects the sound of the name cain in hebrew bayin and give and gives meaning to it the saying uses the the call the perfect of it so these two things, so it's like a pattern within the language. Yeah, there yeah. are two homonymic verbs with this spelling, one meaning obtain, acquire, and the other meaning create. So they're saying yeah. that this verb that's being used yeah. can be obtain, yeah. acquire, or create. Yeah. And they well, give other examples. And it says the latter fits this context very well. Eve has created a man. Yes, but it's it's okay. Uh, I mean, you but, can you're saying, but you're saying this means that she gave... Birth to Yahweh. Yeah, there he goes. The, 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 and this explanation it's about the et here. There's yeah. actually a really interesting. Let me just zoom in on this. Sure. There's an explanation about the et here. It says, okay. I don't know if you guys can read this. It says that the particle et is not the accusative object sign, but the proposition with as the ancient age, ancient versions attest. So let me read that because that's really the, the heart yeah. of your. So it's basically the, the same. Et, it's not the it's not the accusative object sign, mm -hmm. but the proposition with as the ancient versions attest. Some propositions in the sense of with the help of, uh, while others along with in the sense of like equally in common with. Either works well in this context. The latter is reflected in the present translation. Some understand it as the accusative object sign and translate. I have acquired a man, the Lord, which is what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They suggest the woman thought mistakenly in, in yes, comma here that she, mistakenly. That she had given birth to the incarnate Lord, yeah. the Messiah who would bruise the serpent's head. This, yeah. and this is interesting. This fanciful suggestion is based on a questionable allegorical interpretation of Genesis three fifteen. See the note here on the word heal. Um, so let me just bring three fifteen up because we want to try and understand you. Yeah, so yeah. 315 is, I will put hostility between them, between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring, and he will strike your head, and you will you will strike his heel. Uh -huh. And then it says here, um, so what was the insert, what was it saying here? And the, want to bring it up in Hebrew? Sure. Uh, heel. Uh, since Exodus 3.6 seems to indicate that the name Yahweh, translated the laws, was the first revealed to Moses, it is odd to see it used in quotations in Genesis by people who lived long before Moses. 
So I'm going to reread that. Since Exodus 6 seems to indicate that the name Yahweh was first revealed to Moses, it is odd to see it used in quotations in Genesis by people who lived long before. The problem has been resolved in various ways. Source critics say it's uh, part of the priestly tradition, which is at odds with the uh, Yahwistic tradition. Two, they propose that the name does not refer to the divine name per se, but to the character suggested by the name. That's right. God appeared to the patriarch primarily in the role of El Shaddai, the giver of fertility, not as Yahweh. Well, that's very interesting. The one who fulfills his promises. In this case, the patriarchs knew the name Yahweh, but had not experienced the full significance of the name. And it is regarded as possible that Exodus 6.3 would not be translated as a statement of denial, but as a affirmation followed by a rhetorical question implying that the patriarchs did indeed know God by the name of Yahweh, just as they knew him by Shaddai. And then they quote somebody. So that's not really pointing to the heel. Yeah, though, it's, not, it's not really. So what? So what's your, I'll let you lay out, so I'm going to stop this. So I, I just want to understand where you're coming from. So you're saying that, well, uh, what I'm she saying is God. That, she, that, you, that, that Eve thought she had given birth to God. Yeah. Uh, so Eve. basically, um, the uh, the the man God. So because um, that's what it says, um, or a man God, and then so basically, because it's always pointing the Old Testament is supposed to always be pointing towards. Um, what, what Jesus has done, is that saying then that she, she's mistaken with it being straight away because it's happening a long time from when. That's why she is mistaken. This isn't the one, but that doesn't mean that um, it's not pointing towards um, Jesus Christ. So she got it wrong. It wasn't Cain, but she thought that it was going to be do you understand what I'm saying? Like she was, she was told this is how salvation was brought about. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay, so yeah. that's interesting. So, uh, uh, Nazem, what are your thoughts on this? I'll let you have a, and then we'll, we'll get into the discussion of it. Oh yeah, I just don't find the argument um, convincing. Um, I mean, there's a number of ways of like approaching um, the argument. Um, one is like even like if we just take it for face value, um, that it does say like what what you say it says um like why do you believe that statement to be true in the first place because um in exodus chapter six as um dr Imam pointed out um it, it says that the name of god wasn't known to the patriarchs um so it there seems to be a contradiction so both both places cannot be true uh but also i would just read it as a kind of like a divine agency um that verse um in that um it's not literally he's giving birth to yahweh but it, it's just that the child is like a representative of god and so like the child represents god or is like a blessing from god because even in the letter of james it says um all good gifts are from heaven so um like a, a child or a baby you can say is like a gift from heaven um so it's like a figurative way of speaking about god um so yeah um, and, and also the final point would be also um like yahweh obviously refers to a person um, yeah. and it can only grammatically only refer to one person rather than multiple persons like your name timothy um refers to one person it doesn't refers to a plurality of, of people um, within like one being or one essence so yeah. only one of the members like of the trinity can be yahweh and um in the old testament um in isaiah uh chapter 68 verse 4 i believe um it only says that yahweh is the father it doesn't say yahweh is father son and holy spirit yeah i guess that that's what i would say what, what was that in Isaiah? What? Uh, chapter 68, verse 4. Um, it says, um, Yahweh, our Father. It doesn't right. say Yahweh, our Son, or our Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's only the Father's identified as as being Yahweh. Okay. So, no, right. 
what are your thoughts? So it's really so just to because I just want to reemphasize the point. So it, first of all, it's a, it's a it's a it's a reading that requires you to already hold the concept of God being able to be born in your mind. Yeah, yeah, no, I hundred percent agree. So, that. So I'm just yeah. I'm just summarizing what what Nazim said. So the, first of all, the only way to really have that reading of it um, is to first come with this concept that God can incarnate. The second thing is actually the name Yahweh wasn't known until the time of Moses, according to the Old Testament. Um, the other, the, and the, the other point is actually probably more straightforward. More straightforward. This is the first human being that was born. Yeah. So you've had the creation of Adam by God. You have the creation of Eve from the rib of Adam. Yeah. And this is the first human being that's born. So to, uh, they they conceive and a child is born. So they've a creative act of bringing about a human being that only previously has been done by God has yeah. happened. And so the the more straightforward reading of it is that that I would see. Oh, oh mashallah, brother Ajaz has joined us as well. Salam alaikum, brother Ajaz. The the more straightforward reading of it is actually just that just that just acknowledging that that I've done what. Uh, not not in identically, but I've done what God has done. I you brought about a, a human being, and this and I think this is really, which is where this seems to have been coming from. I have acquired a man from Yahweh, or um, so I've, I'm just trying to look at it literally. I have acquired a man from Yahweh, or I have created a man just as the Lord did, which is how the NET translates it. It seems to be the it seems to make sense because the first human being that's actually born and the, and the person uh, obviously this is going to be eve who's giving birth is making this making this exclam exclamation and that fits in rather than so that the way to so if you put all these points together i think that to look at it specifically with eyes of this is actually the incarnation of god on earth you end up with a problem that nazim emphasized about the personhood because yahweh is not a person yahweh is three persons this is the belief, right? The God. I, I believe she's wrong in her thinking, but I believe that that she thought um, by by this text, she thinks that this is possible. Not that she was wrong so, in it. Yeah, she was wrong in her thinking that of what that this was God. No, she was wrong in her thinking about because the point I raised was that she's yeah. that this is one person she's referring to. Yeah. Which is what Brother uh, uh, Neza mentioned. So, because that conclusion leads to a problem in that, but Yahweh is three persons. Yeah, this is the belief. So, how would yeah. you call one individual three persons? Yeah, I, I, uh, well, because he is three and one. It's a bit complicated. <laughs> so, the, so the, I understand that, but the the sorry, uh, 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 Neza. So, I just want to say, so if there's the the person is one because there's yeah. one in, one incarnation. Let's say one incarnation. Yeah, you wouldn't refer to that term that person with the collective term. So you wouldn't say Jesus is Yahweh in terms of referring to the the Godhead. Why? Why not? We, is is Jesus the Godhead? Well, no, but he is the he is Yahweh though. At the same time, like that's that's a that's a belief of Christians is that um, he is. Uh, Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, Yahweh the Holy Spirit. So he's, he is Yahweh. He is just one and God, is, but he's in three different persons. Sure. And this is where I, this is where it really, for me, starts to fall apart. So okay. the, the so it's it's the first human being that's being. Uh, so the, the issues here were I'll just I'll summarize them. Specifically, a Trinitarian lens has to be looked at to bring this about. Uh, yeah. the incarnation being given birth to. Second, secondly, the, the name Exodus, uh, the name of uh, Yahweh wasn't really, uh, according to Moses, uh, was revealed in the time, uh, time of Moses in Exodus 6. Yeah. And then we have the uh, it being a single being, um, mm. a single person who's referred to as Yahweh. That would, if anything, emphasize that Yahweh is one person. I mean, I would put that forward because, again, to look at it in another way is to bring a, a later Christian lens onto this and say, no, Yahweh can be... Yeah. 
all of the all of the all of the parts all of the not part, I don't want to say parts I'm misrepresenting that all of the persons are individually Yahweh um that's it again bringing a, a, bringing, a, bringing, like, bringing a Christian lens yeah. and then and then the last thing is which is about the the more natural reading this is the first human being that has been born ever so this is almost this would naturally bring that comparison of a creative act like the act of uh of the creation of Adam and Eve. So this is where I think it's, I think this is more straightforward. Otherwise I think you're bringing the Christian lens really to do this, but sorry, brother Nazim, I'll let you continue. And then brother. Oh, Ijaz no, I was just going to verify. I like grammatically the name Yahweh just refers to one person. So if you say yeah. Jesus is Yahweh, then yeah. who is the son of Yahweh? So who is the son of Jesus? Um, because if it, if it refers to more than one person, then it should be Yahweh's. And not yeah. Yahweh singular. Just like your name is Timothy, it's not Timothy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so carry on, brother. It just. Or... But is that um, is that um, Dr. Imran? Is that was um, when in in the start of because you're saying that they um, they can't uh, be together. But what about where he says, "Let us us." like um create man in our image when because that's not the royal we here where he says that do you know what oh, I'm so, sorry, oh, sorry yeah so there's a rule in arabic uh, sorry in hebrew which is the same yeah. as in arabic um in that the, the 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 number of the so when you're talking about the verb oh, yeah. i'm going to get the, the rule wrong they have to ma it has to match in terms of number and gender it does yeah yeah so if you look at genesis let me just get genesis 1 1 up uh, genesis yeah. 1 1 and let's look, look for the interlinear if i can find it oh, I'll just find that sorry give me 2 seconds you're right genesis 1 1 interlinear Someone may have it already before me. Let's bring it up. So let's just bring this up so we can have a look. Uh, Genesis 1, in the beginning, created. Okay, now I'm going to just pr uh, present this. Present screen share window. And here we go. So that, that should, so let's add this to the screen. So you should be able to see this. Let me just zoom in a bit. So here, here, it's very interesting because the word et here is as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that's referring to the, uh, it, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. But it says in the beginning. Yeah. Very but true. it's yeah. bara, created. Yeah. Elohim. Yeah. God, which is in the plural, but it's God here. Yeah, yeah. Et, the heavens and the earth. Yeah. And what? So what did you, you said? No, no. We so this is, yeah, yeah. So the, you know, so, like I said, that's not Genesis one. Um, hold on one second. Verse twenty six is what he's referring to. One twenty six. Yeah. Yeah. Let us create man in our image. Okay. So, let us. Here we go. Uh, and said God, Elohim, yeah. let us create man in our image, mm -hmm. according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish and the sea, and it goes on. So you're saying that this is not a plural of majesty? That's correct. Because we right. will put, um, well, there's no, the Hebrew doesn't do that. They, there is no, there is no plural of majesty. Like he's, he's never used that any other, um, any other time. Like God, so is, God speaks lots of times and he doesn't say we. It's not like Arabic. You know how um, Allah yep. says we will do this, but the Hebrew doesn't do that. Are you sure about that? Yeah, 100%. So what's what's Elohim? Elohim um, is the name of God. It can mean either the God or God's plural. It's singular or plural because only because you can't pluralize it because it already has a yod and a mem at the end. So some words can't be pluralized because they already naturally are pluralistic. So not that he that's a plural word. 
it's just a word, but it can it can't be pluralized because it already has the I am at the end of it. No, no. So I am is plural. So I think I think you misunderstand. Some words have a yod and a mem at the end of it, and and so they they you can't pluralize a word that's already got a plural ending. So you know that's a masculine plural ending some have a feminine plural ending and they because they're already plural plural you could sort of can't pluralize them you understand what i'm saying yeah but the, i think you i think you're maybe some of the other brothers can assist with but i think you're making a mistake here okay in that the 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 the, the word for god and i'll give you yeah. i'll give you the i'll give you the um i'll give you some evidence here rather than so let me give you a uh Concord, uh, I think it's a concordance here that I'm bringing up. So this is again from Bible Hub, yeah. and this is a, a concordance, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's saying the word origin is the so this Elohim is talking about Elohim here. So we're talking yeah. about Elohim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you look at the the it's a it's a part of speech, uh, non a noun a noun which is masculine Elohim definition God word mm -hmm. origin the plural of Eloah. Sorry, guys. Could I could I just interject here? Yes, please, please. Yeah. yeah in, yeah. in Hebrew, right? For Hebrew verbs, there's the common singular, and then there's the common plural. I think here in verse twenty six, I don't think it's used in the uh, in the preceding verses, but you might see it in the interlinear. I'm on a delay, so I I I can't tell. But if you can check, it might say common plural, right? And so. That does refer to pluralis majalis. It can be used in that sense. Otherwise, so, so actually it says here masculine plural uh, on the uh, interlinear. For the, verb, for the the verbs are either common singular or common plural. Yeah, it's, it's first like person common plural. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if it yeah. if first it's CP, plural. then that would be common plural. That would be pluralis majalis. What is later known as uh, what do you call it? The plural of majesty. majesty. Yeah. Now, he, uh, I think Timothy said that 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 does not exist in Hebrew, but that's, that's what right. the common singular and common plural is. The later term for it in the Latin is fine, but that doesn't mean it that doesn't preclude its existence in the text. So the common plural and common singular, um, it's also used in Genesis 18 um, when the angels and God speak at the same time. The common singular is used there. Um, can so you show me where? Can, can, can we bring Genesis that up? 18, Genesis 18. It. Sorry, I'm Genesis on the side of the way. Yeah, Genesis 18. Um, in the Hebrew, when the um, uh, when the angels are speaking to, to um, what's his name? Abraham, I think. Do you know which verse it is? Uh, uh, well, let me see. Uh is it no, Genesis chapter 24, verse 9? No, it's Genesis 18. Just give me a sec because I'm on a slight delay. Okay. Let me see if I can build it up here. Give me a sec. Uh, Try and find I have it. a PDF on this. I, I uploaded somewhere, so it's possibly there as well on the website. Just give me 10 seconds. Let me see if I can build it up here for myself. No, no problem. Uh, if it's Genesis 18, I think it's going to be verses... Might be verse six. Just give me one second here. Yeah, Genesis. That's an interesting eight. verse you're bringing up because that's when he talks about the the three of them talking to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. It was then Abraham quickly makes and Abraham runs to the cattle. Uh, okay. Um. I think I'll, uh you'll find it in verse uh, three. I think. Where you'll find uh, the common singular being used there. Uh, verse three. Let me see if you're marking singular. Yeah, I have found the verb common singular CS is used there. Uh, uh, let me see. I've left favor and uh, refresh yourselves. I think in verse five as well, when it uses the word for refresh, I think it might be used here as well. This way, I have found. When it says refresh, let me see, uh, as you may do, as you have said, masculine singular, masculine plural, uh, I pray, I, yeah, common singular in your sight. So it's used throughout the text, common singular and common plural. 
So, can I go back on mute? Because there's going to be a slight delay. Forgive me. I'm not on my um. No problem. No problem. If I so find I it, I'll, I'll go through the text again on my own, and I'll just put it in the chat and highlight it on the screen when I've. Uh, I'll no problem. Point right. So please forgive me. But you can just look up common singular and common plural in the Hebrew Bible, and it's littered throughout the text. Usually, when Yahweh speaks. Um, and the Jews have their own reasoning for interpretation of that. I'm not going to get into that, but technically it is present in the text. Just wanted to establish that. Okay. So, so I think that's really important. And the reason I was doubtful, um, not because I have a great grasp of Hebrew, because, but the reason I was doubtful uh, of that was because actually um, the, the the Arabic and Hebrew are sister languages. And ah, when, yeah, I do know that. Hebrew, I just... The the same same. Oh, yeah, because your your speciality is uh, my feel, my Hebrew. so when they, when it was when the Hebrew was revived, it actually it, one of the things they did was they actually went to the, the a lot of the grammar of the um of the Arabs to try and because they were so closely related. Um, so let me just bring up. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can find anything specific. So I so that the idea that the plural of majesty because it seems exists in virtually every language and even in English we have this sort of uh so for example if i'm uh, when we when we're talking um if we say that we're talking about things this is something that is something but if i were to talk about a person uh, i i don't uh, i wouldn't say that um if i'm talking to them directly I'd, you know i i say you are my friend uh, are is something you would use with uh, plural th things or multiple things not with singular things uh, you wouldn't yeah. say to them, you is my friend, which is actually technically that's one bit thing there. It's, and, the, and the reason we say you are my friend is because actually that's a sign of respect. Uh, it's, a, it's a plural of most. And, the, and, and we know about the common one example of the queen, we, you know, we decree and it's a, a singular person. So this this thing exists in more obviously in other languages, particularly Hebrew, Arabic, any Eastern language, we, we never refer to anyone who's, our elder or you know someone respect without it being in a plural uh, form uh, even though it's a single person we're speaking to and this is and so i would expect that to be found in the hebrew because of the arabic itself and brother ijaz gave a few examples there so i th what are you what so it's interesting uh, uh, brother nazim did you have any other th things to add at all yeah, to yeah i was just going to add um it's been pointed out in the chat i'm um, like by brother tv tvk and i looked it up I'm um, in Genesis chapter 24, verse 9. Uh, the majestic plural is used for Abraham. So he's referred to it as masters, Abraham, um, in the Hebrew. But in the English translation, it's translated as master. So this is like a majestic plural that's being used for Abraham. Um, another oh, example that... Sorry. Sorry. Can, yeah example in Genesis chapter 1 even though verse 26 says let us make man in our image when you go to verse 27 it says God singular made him right so it it doesn't go back to the plural there which would oh, be yeah. a uh, we can ex we have the ex we can explain it with our majestic plural but it would be inconsistent for God to say something meaning to do it in the plural and then in the next verse, we reverts back to the singular. That that wouldn't make sense unless it's the majestic plural. Yeah, absolutely. Can you can we go back to that so I can so I can see that though? Sorry, sorry, Ijaz. What what verse? Uh, what, what did you want to go back verse, to? Uh, what Genesis Ijaz chapter, chapter one verse twenty eight. Twenty seven, 27, I think. 20, sorry, twenty seven. Yeah, the very next verse. Yeah. Okay. Let me just let me give me one second. I'll represent it. Yeah. Guys, if I can just uh, gently rush the conversation just a little bit, as we've got so many guests waiting, uh, and we're not going to probably be able to get everybody on. So, if we could perhaps maybe just wrap yeah, round maybe, up. Maybe this the last point, oh, okay. please. Yeah. That's okay. So this is this is one uh, twenty-seven. So it says, uh, "So created God." Uh, this is masculine plural. Yeah. Uh, at man in his own image, in the image of God, masculine plural, he mm -hmm. created him. Male and female, he created them. So what was the mm -hmm. point that you were making, Ijaz? I, I didn't... 
it's, it's a grammatically the, the pronoun is in the singular him then he made man in, yeah, in yeah, his yeah. own image rather than our image so do you understand or that consistency of the pronoun with the number if it was a plural being then it would be we this is commonly raised actually that you know god never says that's, that that's god. not it's always used but that's it's not he in created that's just that's just bright just created it's just um um well, it's it's the verb the verb the one doing the action is always singular here that it's he god that created in the uh, in his image created the verb is in the singular it's not in the plural and it's masculine third person yeah, yeah. masculine singular yeah yeah hence it's, why it's translated as he he created yeah, rather okay. than they created yeah 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 okay interesting i'll look that up and and um, the other thing I was just going to very uh, quickly add, also in Genesis 1 1, it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, but as you know, it's, it's Elohim in, in the Hebrew, but yeah. no English translation has ever translated in the plural. You know, in no the more. beginning, God, yeah. everyone always translates it in the singular. Absolutely. Um, and also, Moses is also called Elohim as well. But uh, we understand Moses just to be one person. Yeah, it's in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 is Moses is called Elohim? Yeah. Okay. So let's bring it up for you. Yeah. So it says, uh, And so said Yahweh to Moses, I have made you Elohim. Oh, Pharaoh and, yeah. and Aaron and your brother and you and shall be your prophet. So like, yeah, so like, yeah, to be like. No, no, the word over. like is not there. Yeah, there's no like here. Yeah, 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 I know, but it's using that as an example. So I'm making you like. Um, it just is not ma making him actually like. He's not making him God, but it's just saying he, you will be like God. In this situation, but so it's not. So it's not. Yeah, he's not being. Uh, yeah. The, the point being is just grammatically, it's it's plural. Elohim is plural, but yeah, there yeah. it's translated as a singular God, rather than yeah. gods. Yeah. So those are examples of majestic plurals. Thank you very oh, much, well, everyone. Well, I think you've all uh, given Thank quite you. a lot of input here. Yeah, uh, Tim. Pleasure to have you on, brother. Thank and uh, we've got so many people waiting. I'd love to get the others on quickly, but it's always a pleasure having you on. It's nice to see you. Yeah, you too, guys. Thanks very much. Yep. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too, bye. Lovely. Okay, so let's see. Um, Ron, my my uh, laptop is still running a bit slow. If you cool. could um, get the next guest on, inshallah. So we have. Tua, uh, Tua, if you can turn your camera on, I know you've been probably waiting the longest, uh, then we can try and get you on. Uh, without your camera, unfortunately, we won't be able to get you on. And but I think one of the things that we're going to have to do now is that if we ask you to put your cameras on and you repeatedly do not put them on, we're going to have to just take you off the backstage mm -hmm. and allow others to join. That's all I can love, lo lovely hat, but I'd like to see your face if that's possible. Uh, <laughs> if you can. Yeah, so again, a lovely pair of glasses. I can't actually see your face. So if you can lower your... Perfect. If you just put up uh, three fingers for me as well, that's my three-finger test. Yeah, perfect. And if you can just uh, take off the heart moment. <laughs> yeah. Can you do a one-handed push-up? No, I'm just joking. I'll, I'll get you onto the stream now. You can turn your <laughs> camera off. Feel free to... Uh, uh, perfect. Uh, so if you want to turn your camera off, you can do so. I'm going to bring you onto the stream now, okay? With your muted uh, tour. Good afternoon, brothers. Hi there, hi, Tower. Welcome. Yes. Can I stop my camera now or I have to... Yeah, yeah, no, you on. can stop it. You can stop it. Uh, okay. anytime. Yeah. yeah. I have been uh, asking friends a lot about um, Zechariah in the uh, Ali Imran 3, 35 to 37. And nobody can answer me. So I was uh, thinking, oh, maybe I should join the EF Dawa and ask him, who is Zechariah that lived during Imran time, Moses uh, uh, and Moses' mother, who gave Mary to um, Zechariah to be taken care of? 
And I asked a, a Jewish friend, and he said, nope, I don't see the history of that. And I asked Muslim friend, and they also can't figure it out. So I wonder if you can uh, tell me who is Zechariah really uh, in this in this uh, verses of Ali Imran 35 to 37. Sorry, so, uh, so just clarify your question a little bit. Uh, it's not making sense because you're, you're you're giving a time frame in your question that's not co quite clear. Okay, uh, if you read the uh, three thirty five uh, Ali Imran, you can read perhaps uh, three thirty five to thirty seven. It just clearly said that uh, that Mary was uh, uh, given. Uh, uh, for Zechariah by Imran's wife to be taken care of. And Zechariah, as, as also in uh, Mariam, it says that he's the mother of uh, Yahya. As I know in, in Islam, I read some, somewhere Yahya is the John the Baptist. Now, I'm not sure if that's true, but according to Islamic source, that's what it says. So I was wondering. Then who is Zechariah? Because it's, I know uh, from the Hadith also that uh, uh, Moses uh, is uh, bin, bin Imran. So I was wondering, who is Zechariah in this case? Because I don't you're, know if Zechariah. Um, sorry, Tua. Uh, uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if other people are understanding. Your question is not making any sense to me. So who is Zechariah? Who is Zechariah? So Who's let, me, let me clarify. Let me try and understand you. Um, I want you to tell me what you think the problem is so that we can then try and help you with the problem. Because the way you're putting it forward, it's not it's not making any sense to me. So okay, what, let me, let me, what let I'd me, like uh, you to do. Actually, what I'd like you ask. to do. I'll, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. Just tell us exactly, give us who you, who you think the Quran is talking about. And who, which time frame you're putting them in, then we'll go from there, if that's all right. Well, that's what I'm asking. Who is Zechariah? Now, the time frame is that Imran and his wife giving birth to Mary. And Mary is supposed to be given to Zechariah to be taken care of. And I know that Zechariah, according to Islamic source, also from Quranic verses, is the father of Yahya, which is, according to an uh, Islamic source, is John the Baptist. So I'm just and asking. And what, is the, and what is the problem that you're presenting? My, 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 my problem is that Imran, if Imran, according to Hadith, is the father of Moses, I can't figure out the time frame of Imran, his wife, and Zechariah as John the Baptist's father. Okay, so I want to understand you. So you're saying that there is an Imran who is the father of Moses, and there is an Imran who is the father of Mary. And your concern is that you, and you're asserting that these are the same people. Well, that's what I was asking. Because Zechariah, I'm asking Zechariah you, is I'm, given. Uh, Tua, Tua, one second. I'm trying to understand your the thing that you're putting forward. Okay, so uh, because uh, there's no point if because because you if we want to answer, we want to help you, yeah, but we need to know your claim. So the claim that you seem to be making is that there's an Imran who is the father of Moses, and there's an Imran who is the father of uh, Mary, Mary. Please be upon them, and you're saying that these are the same people, no, the I'm same never... person, the same person. No, I'm just asking who is Zechariah. I'm not talking about Imran's father. or uh, Zechariah is given as a guardian by Imran's wife. Your, your question is not making any sense now. Imran, it's very simple. May, maybe uh, uh, any of the other brothers uh, understand. One second, Tua. Uh, do any of the other brothers understand what Tua is saying? Because I'll be honest with you, there's no... There's no uh, it doesn't make sense to me what he's saying. No. Uh, Imran's uh, wife, so, Imran's wife assigned Zechariah as the guardian for Mary. Yes, that's right. So 
in that case, then, if Imran's wife, it means is also the mother of Moses because Imran is a father of Moses. So I'm asking you, who is this Zechariah? So we come back to the same point, uh, Tua. So you are asserting, and I, this is what I want you to understand, because you, you're, you're, you're asserting that the Imran, who is the uh, mother of Mary, sorry, he's the father of Mary, is the same Imran who is the you're saying is the mother is the father of Moses. Is that Moses. right? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Why are you saying that? Well, that's a Quran. Uh, that's what the Quran and Hadith said. I'm not saying it. So what, how have you determined that this is the same? Are you saying that the term, like my name, for example, is Imran? Yes. Yeah. Are you saying that I'm I'm therefore now going to be the same individual or you're not? Uh, the, the Imran in the Quran is the same individual. So, uh, so that's what you need to establish, please. Yeah. So this is the point, because what you're doing is you're making a claim and it wasn't making sense to me, and I thought it was. So now I want you to bring something that tells us that these people are the same. Because you're, because you're, this is the claim that you're making. I want you to make that claim clear by bringing some evidence, rather than just throwing it out there. That you know, because it sounds like a. It, I'm not very convinced by this way of putting it forward. So please tell me. I just read. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Of what I mean, yeah. Okay, so, go ahead. So on on the crucifixion on the day of the crucifixion, there were two Jesuses that were being crucified. What? Where is it? G from? I, I'm, this I'm telling you. I'm okay, giving you okay, example. Okay, go ahead. I'm you an example. One was you claim Jesus, the Son of Mary, yeah, the Messiah. This one's claimed. The other one was Jesus Barabbas. No, both, those are both, yeah. those are both. Basilides. Uh, listen, no, no, no. Listen, it's listen, not me, in one, the gospel. One second. Well, one second. Yes, it's in the gospel. Which gospel? Um, Matthew, yeah, Matthew we can tell you that. We can give you the quote. But now, I'm, but I'm because I'm, I'm, you haven't given references. I'm giving you. I'm giving you the example. There are okay. two Jesuses that were being crucified on the day of the crucifixion. <laughs> two Jesuses. Yeah, Jesus, the Son of the Father, Jesus Barabbas, and Jesus the uh, uh, the Christ. The, yeah, the or Messiah. The Messiah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. They so that those terms, son of the father and the Messiah, can be applied. You can apply both of those to the one that you're interested in, Jesus the Messiah. Yeah, and they let Jesus Barabbas, Jesus the son of the father, go according to the narrative. Yeah, so now I'm asking you which Jesus was crucified? Is it the one that was the Messiah that you claim, or was it the one who was caught alongside Jesus, or are they the same person? Oh, they're not the same. They're not the same. One is a uh, one. They're not the same. How, how how do you know that they're not the same? The, the one that is crucified, the one who's supposed to uh, 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 claim that he's the son of man, who are taught to blaspheme uh, Jehovah by the uh, uh, by the Sanhedrin. But the one that was let go was called the son of the father. It doesn't matter. Just because it is a name doesn't mean it's the same person. Absolutely. So this is the this is so you're making the point to us. Okay. You understand. But, now, but so I think what you've done in Ali think, Imran are the same to, verses. So here we go to her. So I think what you've done <laughs> is you've answered your own question. No, no, no. I no, I didn't. Because it is very clear. I asked who is Zechariah? Who is Zechariah who lived in Imran's time? So here is the, the same problem. time as Imran's wife. So who's, you're making is the, this is this is the thing to us. So now you're the this is now where to her. Let, let, let's Sorry. play it again. Let, let's yeah. play it again. It's the guardian of Mary of Allah. No, no, no. My question is my no, no let's not go there. I'm, a, I'm asking you who is Zachariah? Whether it is yeah. the same Zachariah or not, it says in uh, in uh, uh, um uh -huh. in, Ali Imran that it is yeah. father of jo John the Baptist. Otherwise, who is this Zachariah? That given, Mary, uh, that given by Mary, that given by Imran's this, wife to take care uh -huh. of Mary. In verse 26, Zachariah is the guardian of Mary. Yes. And, and right. then so it's we given. Know who he is. So huh? we, we answered that. What are you unclear about? No, no, no. Yes. But who is this Zachariah, historical figure, if it is not history, like 
uh, 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 Muhammad Ahmad Kalafullah said it is not historical. I accept that. But if it is historical person, I ask the Jewish people, who are this? And they said, no, what, no such a person who live in what, Imran's what do time. You mean, what do you mean by historical? Historical. There's yeah, a record you, of them. Record of them? Okay. Yeah, a record, a record perhaps, say, uh, the Jewish record or uh -huh. uh, earlier sources than Quran itself. That's why uh -huh. I asked, is this Zechariah, uh -huh. somebody uh -huh. else? Because nobody, Zechariah, in Jewish sources, that live in Imran's or Imran's wife time. Uh-huh. That's what I'm asking. Who is this Zechariah? Can you okay, tell me so who is this Zechariah? I, I have I have good news and bad news for you. Which one do you want? It doesn't matter to me as long as you can prove it to me historically. Yeah, so historically, you can't prove anything from the Jews. What? Almost anything. Come on, man. You're, all the you're, sources... accusing, or you're accusing them as a falsifier. <laughs> you can't, nope, you can't prove nope, that, man. That's not my claim. Because of the great temple's destruction in the year 70, we don't have any what we would call manuscripts containing historical data from the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd centuries, which contain genealogies, hagiographies, things of this nature. They all tend to come from the early medieval period because they no longer exist. So I can give you a very easy example of this. You cannot prove for me that Abraham is a historical figure on that basis. You cannot, you cannot uh, prove Abraham exists? By your standards of the Jews having to have a record of it in order for it to be historical, by that standard, we have nothing from the time of Abraham and nothing from the time of Moses that will prove to us that they are historical figures because we have nothing that exists from that time. So, so, do you, so by your own standard, you reject Abraham and Moses. Why do you do that? What, what do you mean? Historical? It's not historical figure. The Bible itself is a historical book. So if I go back to the year 1500 BCE, I have nothing which mentions Moses. What is the earliest document that the Jews have which mention Moses? It's in the Bible itself. What century do you get that from? What do you mean? Okay, well, you're there making is a, the there is a, a, Of course, the earlier, earliest, for example, that has a, 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 even the translated, the translation is a 300 uh -huh. BC, 300 before Christ. So we don't have a completed manuscript before from that, 300. Let me correct wait, wait a second. You. Before that, how can have... you say there is a translation before 300 if there is no original one? So there must what's be original the, sorry, one what's before the name of the 300 BCE. What's the name of the manuscript from 300 BCE that mentions Moses and Abraham? What is the name of the manuscript? Yeah. The name of the manuscript that before... The that you manuscript. said that there you is said not necessarily manuscript. You said you have BCE. something. You said you have something from 300 BCE, which is 1100 years after the time of Moses, that mentions Moses. What's the name of that manuscript? Uh, what the 300 BC? There is a Dead Sea Scroll as well at that time. No, the Dead Sea Scrolls are not. Uh, the, they're dated paleographically. The date from around 250 to 100 CE. So you're making a false so assumption. C, that they, C, about so uh, the book making, about the Genesis is on 300, 100 CE? I can't believe you're, that. You're making the claim that you have a manuscript that mentions Moses 1100 years after he exists. 1100 years. Yes, the Septuagint is already translated. The Septuagint. At 300 BC. The, the earliest manuscript of the Septuagint is Codex Sinaiticus. What? And that's from the earliest manuscript, manuscript of the Greek of... Septuagint is from the year 325 CE. So no, you don't know the history of the Bible as well. What, what do you mean? The, uh, uh, Tua, 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 Tua,
Sure, I'll do you, I'll do you a favor. My right question now. is, my, let's not sure. go there. My question is, sure. no, 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 is who sure. is Zechariah sure. in Ali Imran? Three? Sure, I'm sure. We're doing this publicly, right? All your brothers in Christ just heard you claim that the Septuagint exists before the year 325. Please give us that manuscript if you are truthful. Otherwise, I have to tell you that you're making a false claim. And if you are a man of God, you are sharing a dishonest claim. Be because I understand screen. also, Jesus, uh, uh, uh -huh. that Jesus himself, uh -huh. according, to, according to the Bible commentaries, created, uh, not created, what we call this, quoted the uh -huh. Isaiah when he is reading in the temple. So uh -huh. there must be something before then. What do you Look, it's from the year 325. It's just that simple. Okay, what? let's let let's do it by that because standard. Jesus then. already okay. used the Septuagint. Oh, well, he didn't. That's from the year three twenty five. But I'll do you no, this no, favor. No, 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 no. I'll when do you Jesus, the favor. When Jesus I'll grant the you the temple, favor. When Tua, uh, when well, Tua, you don't have any record of that before the what year three twenty five. That's what the commentary the says. Year, Tua, before <laughs> the year three twenty five. Give me the manuscript that tells us Jesus read that in the temple. Well, and if you are going back around and around, the very simple question I ask, who is the Zechariah? Then I can say, well, where is where is the Uthmani Quran? Easy. We have top copy, Sulaiman, you know, right? Top copy is not Uthmani. All right. Top copy is not Uthmani. That is from the 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 Uthmani. Yeah, they are called from the Uthmani Qurasim. And it is agreed that this is written in the Hijazi script. So no, the so claim would be so so Okay, you know what? I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute Tua because notice. this is this is descending into uh, nonsense, quite frankly. Well, I'll just and, make I'll just make one point and I'll leave it, which is that right. by Tua's standard, unless the Jews mention something, then it's not historical. On that basis, the Jews claim that Jesus was stoned and then hung, and his mother was a harlot. That's not my claim. Oh, no. so, so, as no, Muslims, no. we don't believe this, but to us, since he worships what the Jews say, they stoned Jesus, then they crucified him. So I hold him to that standard. Yeah. Tua, look, I think we're, uh, I don't want to be rude, but I think we're wasting our time a bit here. Uh, because yeah, you don't answer me. Nobody answered well, no, me. No, the no, Jews no, okay. doesn't know who's... Uh, all right, Tua, that... I've, I've had to mute you again because nobody seems to be able to get a, a word in edgeways with you. It's a waste of time because you're making claims that are untrue. Now, either you're just ignorant and you don't know, or you're doing it deliberately just to try to establish a case, and that's that's called being dishonest. Now, either way, whether it's ignorance or dishonesty, it just doesn't make for a good stream. It doesn't make for a good discussion. It, it doesn't result in, in, in you becoming hopefully a little bit more educated about what no, you're no, talking about. No, I, I, mean, I want to have information from you. Who is this well, Zakaria? If the Imran problem is, the problem is to tell, her, me, tell me. The problem is to, her, to get information, you have to be open. You have to open your ears. You have to hear the information. You have to try to acknowledge and understand the information. But if you have already made your mind up and you're willing to make things up just to try to establish a case, and when double standards are being I have not made to you, my mind up. When I double, when Imran, double standards, Tua, when double standards are being shown to you, that look, you're being, inconsistent, you're being inconsistent with your approach, you're, you're just referring back to the same question again, without even understanding that you're showing double standards and you're not being honest here with the discussion. So uh, I think we're going to let you go, Chua. Uh, I still gonna, ask. Yeah, yeah we're going to let you go, to her uh, because I, um, I, I think, you know, as I said, I don't mind having a discussion. I don't mind, uh, you know, people putting challenges out and things like that. But when you're shown your double standards, at least be honest enough to say, you know what, maybe I got that wrong. Maybe that line of thinking is not really fair, not correct. Uh, don't just don't just say we're wrong, even though you don't know, because that just uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We just lose patience. Uh, Adam, you've been waiting for quite a long time. Uh, if you could just touch your head for me, please. Lovely. 
We're going to get you on next, Adam. You can either leave your camera on or you can turn it off, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, let's see if we, we can get you on. There we go. Yep. Can you guys hear me okay? Hi there, Adam. Welcome to the stream. You can hear me okay, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, All right, okay, perfect. I'm so sorry yeah. for earlier. There was a technical issue when I tried to get on and... No problem. My apologies, guys. Not a problem. Yeah. Um, so my my question kind of centers around um, the example of Muhammad and the example of Jesus, because, um, you know, it's kind of the biggest obstacle for me when looking at Islam is because you have to look to the main guy, you know, for, for Christianity, of course, it's Jesus. For, for the Muslim world, it's, uh, it's Muhammad. And for me, the... There seems to be like a massive discrepancy between the life that Jesus lived and the life that Muhammad lived, at least from my reading of uh, the biographies that I've done on Muhammad and, um, you know, what you find in the gospel accounts, for example. So like with Jesus, for example, you have the fact that, you know, he never laid a hand upon anybody. And then you have, of course, the example of Muhammad when he approaches Mecca, for example, uh, after the Medinan period. Um, and you also have stuff like... For example, Jesus said, you know, anybody who, who blasphemes my name will be forgiven. Uh, there, there's accounts, for example, with Muhammad where, you know, people slandered him in a certain way and he had them assassinated. Um, I mean, you know, I ju I'm just trying to make sense of these discrepancies, like from a moral and ethical standard as, as someone who studies philosophy. And I, I would just like your, you guys, you know, to give your, your two cents on it. Inshallah, we can do that. Um, Ijaz, why don't you start first? Because, you know, sometimes you might need to go early or whatever. But please, if you start, then Dr. Imran yeah. and then uh, Nazem. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, I'm on, I'm on a little bit of a delay, so do forgive me. Um, here's what I will put forward, Adam, right? Every single country in the world today, when they create a body of law from which they have their jurisprudence, you have the courts, which is a societal institution, they do not look to the example of Jesus in the Bible to derive how the laws of society are made and built. But when you develop something called case law, you look at a person's life, what trends in society and what the society at large seems to accept as being moral, immoral, or, you know, or, or accepted or not accepted. For the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we Muslims do not say that we interpret this on our own. We have the Quran and we have the prophetic Sunnah. A lot of what is contained in the biographical uh, stories about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are not contained in the Quran or the prophetic Sunnah, what we consider to be the authentic Hadith tradition. They contain in what we call the, 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 the Marazi literature, which is the war literature, a little bit, or his life story. For us as Muslims, uh, we don't consider this entire body of literature to be authentic. However, what is authentic, I would argue, is moral and is a helpful guide to society. So I'll give an easy example. The laws on marriage. I can look at the example and life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I, I don't think anyone here would disagree on what he has commanded and what is described of him. Didn't lay a hand on his wives, provided a home, shelter, food and security for them. No dispute there. That the marriage contract is something which is public and you're not supposed to hide it. Simple things which are reasonable to all of us. If, however, I were to take your standard and apply to the life of Jesus, I would argue that you cannot have a functional society whatsoever. As an example of this, you said that Jesus never laid a hand on anyone. But when Jesus went to the temple, what did he do? This is my father's temple, right? Mm -hmm. And he took the money changers and he threw over their tables and all of these things. If I applied that standard to the Christian world of today, then we can't have interest and we can't have money bearing loans and we can't have currency exchanges. Adam, you can't tell me that that's not what you use on your day-to-day -day life. I'll even go one step further. You can't have case law on how to handle a marriage or a divorce 
or if you commit adultery and you have children to take care of, you can't do that with the life of Jesus. What do you do? You can't have a functional society. So when you tell me, let's compare the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the life of Jesus, I make three simple points. One, the incomparable, because the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is more similar to the life of Moses, where you can have a case law for a functional society. Point number two, both of them were moral men and moral leaders. And while it is the case that Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a state leader, a commander-in-chief, had the authority to fight against those who tried to kill his people, this is accepted today because you, Adam, you accept when, uh, what do you call it, is it uh, GC, uh, what's the government service again, guys, can you remind me? Uh, it begins with G. I forget it. Uh, I, I'll skip the name of it. But when MI5 or MI6 has to kill someone by GCHQ. Say that again? GCHQ? Yeah, GCHQ, Government Communication Headquarters, right? When they collect information to assassinate what they consider to be rogue agents, you have no problem with that. They assassinate people all the time. But they do so for public security, not simply because they insulted someone. The same thing for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's my second point. My third point is this, Adam. If you want to be consistent, give us real-world examples and apply to the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then apply it to the real-world life of Jesus, peace be upon him. I promise you that you can't derive, like I said, from point number one, case law that is applicable to the rest of the world. That's why Christi former Christian nations have had to create constitutions and a body of case law from which to make jurisprudential decisions, to judge the value of a human life, how it is to be punished, how it is to be freed, the penalties labeled against it. Right? You can't do that with the life of Jesus. And if I were to hold you to what Jesus said, Adam, let's do so literally. When the young man, the young rich man came to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to have salvation? What did he say, Adam? To give up everything, sell it and follow me. If you think you follow the life of Jesus, I hold you to do that first and then lecture us on morality. Sorry, boys, that's my three points. I don't mean it disrespectfully, Adam. Uh, please forgive me. I am speaking quite quickly, and I hope that was uh, sensible. Uh, I'm going to mute now, guys. Yeah, can I can I try and respond uh, if I can? Um, yeah, no, no. I, like, I, I understand perfectly what you're saying, but I think in the context of when Jesus is giving everything off, uh, this idea of sacrifice in the ultimate sense, I mean, that's something that is, uh, reflective of God's very nature uh, in terms of what it means to be a true disciple of God. And you are right. I mean, in, in, in the world today is that, you know, most people aren't willing to go that far. Uh, but it's a testament to the link between Jesus and God. But the the thing that I was just concerned with, for example, was um, from a revelatory standpoint, if if Islam is supposed to be a continuation of Christianity, then there should be a revelatory link between the both. They should be in some sense congruent with one another. Um, and the thing is, is there's certain contradictions between their ethical and moral approaches. So, for example, with Jesus, you have this philosophy of turn the other cheek, whereas Muhammad's uh, version of that was uh, what's called just warfare, right? Or expansionist warfare. Uh, you then have something like where Jesus says, uh, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword, right? Again, speaking out against any form of violence. And then uh, with Muhammad, it seemed to be unless you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. So there are these clear like discrepancies between their teachings. Right. And it just suggests in some sense that they're they're tapping into two completely def different revelations. So the question is, is like uh, from a moral and ethical standpoint, which revelation is coming from God and then which is coming from a completely separate source? You know, because you can't you can't have two completely contradictory revelations that are you know, equatable with one another. It's just, it's just not feasible. Um, so, um, uh, Adam, pleased to meet you. 
Um, there, there's no uh, rep authentic report uh, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, nor um, any verse in the Quran that says, um, unless if you live by the sword, uh, you shall die by the sword. Um, you know, but I, what I, meant by that, I, I apologize. What I meant by that is just the example of Muhammad in terms of um, uh, this idea of just warfare, expansionist warfare would be that doctrine enacted. That's what I meant by it. Whereas Jesus was against that in terms of his own teachings. So that's kind of where I meant by the discrepancy. Maybe I didn't explain that as well as I should have. Yeah, so which it. verse are you referring to when it comes to expansionist warfare? Because uh, when the Quran speaks of jihad, it is said within the context of defensive warfare. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Quran says, for example, in chapter 16, verse 125, um, to invite people or to call people to the path of your Lord. Uh, with wisdom and with uh, uh, beautiful uh, counsel, uh, but it doesn't say to pick up the sword and to convert people. Uh, I think, um, Nasser, I think um, uh, he, uh, hearing Brother Muhammad um, um, Hijab explaining this, um, Islam can enter into warfare that is non defensive as well, Adam. You know, I, I, guys, I think we're missing the point. No, no, but the that's, point that's, that, that's I true. agree, Imran. But the point that, but the point here, Adam, is this though, and I think this is the key thing that I think Brother Ijaz raised initially, which was that you're you're claiming certain things about Jesus being the example for us to follow and imi imitate and emulate. He said he says that of himself. Uh, in, right, but but the reality, you see, Adam, and this is this is the important thing here, Adam. In practical day-to-day -day life, the very tenets that Christians say that we should adhere to, show me in history where any Christian nation has managed to stick to those tenets and not become annihilated and wiped off the face of the earth. The reality is you can't, you can't, you can't just turn the other cheek, Adam. Because if well, you turn the if you turn the other cheek, Adam, there would be probably no Christians left on the earth, right? Yeah, like there there is the example, for example, with the early church prior to the Council of Nicaea, uh, where they were heavily prosecuted under the Roman Empire, um, and right. the fact that they even managed to survive amidst that prosecution was, in some right. sense, a miracle. So Adam, they didn't react in a, in a right. violent manner. Okay, so Adam, are, are you proposing to me? that actually in all circumstances you should just turn the, the other cheek. Is that what you're saying? Um, I mean, I'm just looking to the example of Jesus in terms of... So the I, I, guys, I do think we're missing the point here. And no, I think, no, I, I understand think, what you're saying. I think, I, Adam, I, I think, Adam, you're missing the point as well. I think your no. analogy is false. And, I, and, I, and if you don't mind, Abbas, is it all right if I can just sort of... Yeah, go ahead. Because you, you're, you're, there's a there's a few things that you're doing here. In I'm not saying that you're doing this maliciously, or you know, I'm not trying to say anything bad about you. Yeah. But I think your approach is wrong. Okay, so the first thing is, are you Trinitarian? I just want to understand. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you believe Jesus is God, mm -hmm. right? He's and then, you, so, yeah, this is what the claim I understand. I mean, I don't agree with you, but this is your the, yeah, the understanding, no. and this is the point I'm trying to raise here. So you're comparing God to someone who is a human being. Mm -hmm. So fundamental. So the first step in your analysis is not correct. You can't, if you want to make a just comparison, you bring your God. You say Jesus, peace be upon him, is God. This is your belief. We don't believe that. Yeah. And then we'll bring Allah, who we believe is God, creator of the heavens and the earth, and then we'll make a comparison. Mm -hmm. First step. Yeah. And then we can do. Then we can see. Uh, if actually anything applies. So then we have all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-living, uh, the undying, the just, the one who can forgive. We can do all of these comparisons. And what you'll find is that by the very nature of the fact that Jesus is a, uh, is this, uh, you have this concept of the Trinity, not knowing when the hour is, not knowing that the fig tree didn't have fruit, um, not knowing that the, the woman who was bleeding, taking power from him. You know, all of these things don't fit in, just in comparison of a concept of God, don't fit together. So, I think that this. I, th I think that the the, pro, well, the, no, the initial. Just, so I'm just. I'm just going to make. Let me just make my yeah. the, the point. 
So I think the initial approach is not the correct approach. Now, if you want to say that um, you want to compare God incarnating on earth and living a life with a human being, again, this is an unjust comparison. Okay, what you want to do is you want to get a human being, and which is the point that Ijaz was making. That if you want to get a, uh, so let me let me put it this way to you: Do you believe that Moses, peace be upon him, is a false prophet? Moses, of course not. Okay, did Moses partake in war? Did he kill uh, his opponents? Did he uh, do any of these things that oh, you? Yeah, yeah, of course. But did he Moses... did he teach? Sorry, did he teach the eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth? Yep. Did he say? Did he teach that if the uh, if the people uh, apostate the religion, you should they should be killed? Yeah, yeah. Did he teach that uh, uh, all all of these things? So all of these things that Moses Peter him taught, and you don't regard these things as a reason to reject Moses peace be upon him. Is that fair? No, it's not that I don't reject Moses. It's just I don't. You see, there's a difference in Christianity and Islam between the view of prophets. I, we uh, we don't view. No, no, you're missing my point, now, yeah, Adam. So, perfect, uh, what I'm know. asking you is, because of the because you're doing a comparison between the life of an individual mm-hmm. with the life of another individual. Yeah. So but the no, first I, I used a very specific term. I said from a revelatory standpoint. Yes. But, so uh, well, you think uh, I understand. So let me let me unpack this because I'm trying to you made many things and you were I'm trying to unpack this. I'm trying to be fair to you. I'm not trying to yeah. trap you or anything. I'm just trying to highlight where I think the errors are. Yeah. So the first issue was you can't compare God and man. It's that simple. So, so if you and that's that's the first thing that's in error. God incarnate and man, you still cannot compare. If you want to, you have to compare like with like. And then I gave an example of a prophet from the Old Testament who put up, partook in wars, did all of the things that you uh, put forward. Um, you know, you talked about killing and fighting and using the sword and, you know, the the, uh, the laws that, you know, you may feel that are harsh, you know, killing uh, the apostates or putting people to death for uh, fornication or all of these things. Yeah. And then, I, then I said, then the point I was making was you, that is not sufficient for Moses, peace be upon him, for you to reject Moses, peace be upon him. So, that, so now, now the point I'm putting, just, just give me one second. I just, I'll, I'll put you the thing. So, the first thing that I'll put forward is just the consistency. If you cannot use this criteria of living life, the statesman, the enacting laws of God on earth, um, and uh, you, you uh, to reject Moses' peace upon him, then the consistency would mean that you can't use these same things in the life of the prophet, peace upon him, if they're there. Let's just, just give you the benefit of the doubt. I mean, and some of the things you said I, I didn't agree with, but let's just give you that benefit of the doubt, that you, you this is what you think. Then you can also not use that criteria to reject uh, the prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. So there has to be another criteria. Now, what do you, first of all, what do you think of that? And I'll come to the other criteria. What do you think uh, of that point? Just, I, I just wanted to get back to something you said much earlier, and then I'll answer that because yeah, you, yeah. you asked about you know Jesus not knowing the hour. Um, so in the context of the incarnation, if you read Philippians two five to nine, it talks about how Jesus veiled certain aspects of his glory and his divinity. Um, so in, in in the context of him in that particular form, there were certain things that he didn't know, but that was just in a temporal sense and this this limited temporal sense prior to him ascending back to his position of glory. But besides that, getting to the point with Moses and Muhammad, you see, with, with Muhammad, you have two verses, and you, you guys know the verses, so you, you can tell me where they are. But basically, Muhammad is identified in the Quran as the ideal pattern of conduct for all Muslims, right? Now, that's that's setting him as the absolute standard or the absolute example to follow, right? Moses is not set that way in, in the Bible in any in any sense, but Jesus is. So when I'm anal- when I'm analyzing Muhammad as an example and Jesus as a, as an example, I have a premise to do so because in the Quran, Muhammad is the example, and in in Scripture, Jesus is the example or God is the example, right? To look to, right? So can we just deal with that point before we move? Can we? Because because I don't want you to build your house on something that I think is going to fall down. So let's start. Let's deal with this point. So Philippians two nine. I won't go into even the co- God at any point cannot be not God. So, however you want to phrase that or come to that understanding that you know uh, Jesus. It's not that he wasn't uh, God; it was sure. that he veiled some aspects of his. But that's spirit. what I mean: uh, a, a God lacking some ability or whatever 
just from a basic common sense perspective, but we can we don't want to go into that digression. Nope. Uh, would be not God, but I'm just I was just comparing God with God in the beginning because I was saying that the analogy analogy wasn't correct. The, the second thing was is that I'm surprised that you would say that uh, a, a prophet is not an example. No, not in the not in the absolute sense. In so what do you mean by absolute, sense, what do you mean by absolute sense? Because the revelation is coming from God, right? They're not innately giving that revelation themselves. Unless God is speaking through them, they can't deliver that revelation. Um, and unless they're walking with God, they cannot act in the way that they do, right? Because all source, the source of all goodwill and good action comes from God. So we're right? not disagreeing on anything you're saying. So the question I'm asking is, is Moses an example for the Jews or not? Yeah, in some sense, but not in the absolute sense. And it's well, so I think so. This is the, this is the thing. Yeah, so in, in the Quran, it seems that Muhammad is that absolute example. I hear you. I hear you. That, that, so there's a, there's an issue here now. So we here we have uh, for however many uh, millennia you think that people have existed before Jesus, peace be upon him. We have prophets who have come, including the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, who have take partake partaken in war against the disbelievers, etc. Yep. Uh, but the command of God, and you, and what you say is, they're not an example. Not, not in, that, not in the. And that, no, I would say that that's in uh, again we've come to consistency. That, that's inconsistent as an approach. Now, then you say Jesus, peace be upon him, is the example, and then we get back to our thing. Jesus is not human, only. Yep. In your belief, he's not human only, and whatever you do, you cannot emulate God. You you can't. It's impossible. God's perfect. We're not perfect. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Yep. So again, the analogy then becomes a false analogy. Now, the, 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 there's a problem. There's another problem with this. Is is you're missing out the whole of the story of Jesus, peace be upon him, because you've you've not all well, of sorry. You're missing out some of the story of Jesus, peace be upon him, because we know that Jesus will return. Mm-hmm. And what happens at the time of the return? Well, he has to he has to uh, regain dominion and control over all things, and he has to set everything right. So he has to conquer evil in the absolute sense. So how would the conquering happen? Are they going to hug each other and no? It's it's, other it's, it's it's laid out in Revelations and it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be it's going to be very bloody. Killing of the dis etc. will happen, right? Yeah, but the judgment is harsh. I mean, that's no, the role no, of the judgment. No, but you're, but you're not hearing the point. The point that you are making is that actually in the in the time, and this is another point that Ajaz made that I'm sort of just embellishing upon, is that there was a time when everything was nice and rosy and fluffy as presented in the sense that, and I, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being a bit, I don't want to be patronizing. It was very nice and friendly and, you know, love love each other, etc. turn the other cheek. Yeah. But there will be a time when Jesus returns and it will not be like this. Mm-hmm. It will be either you take either it's my way or you're gonna, I'm going to end you. Yeah, and that is good. Yeah, sure. No, but that's, no, no. But here we go. Here, this is the thing: the people at that time, the people at the time with Jesus, because there will be people at the time with Jesus. We believe with the Muslims. We believe that we will be following the Messiah when he comes to fight the Antichrist. We believe that. We believe in Jesus, the return of Jesus, peace be upon him. The people at that time will be following Jesus and doing whatever he is that he asked them to do including fighting the disbelievers. If you're going to be one of those people, if you're around at the time and Jesus was doing, you would be following him at that time. So even this example of taking a short pause, so three years of the life of the ministry or the second or one year, depending on which gospel you read, one year of the ministry of Jesus based upon him, is actually missing out the major part of it. And the part where Jesus becomes the ruler, because this is a, a point where when he returns, he will have the dominion and control and rule. And you apply the rules. Now, applying rules on a society, this is where the, the laws come from. And this is why in, in the New Testament, we have give on to Jesus, uh, Caesar what is Caesar's and mm-hmm. give on to God what is God's. Because there's a separation there, because there's no, there is no uh, actual guidance for people to live their lives, which is the point that Ijaz was making. Again, I'm just embellishing upon that. So I'd, I would say there is a way to, to do a comparison between Judaism and Christianity Islam. But my humble thing is that actually the way you're doing it isn't the way to do it. And I can I can give you my view of how to do it, but I'll, I'll let you, because I've said a lot, and I know I don't want to sort of prevent no, you from no, talking. No, go ahead, go ahead. Tell, tell, me, what, tell me what you think. So have I said anything unreasonable so far? No, no, you've been perfectly fine. You can, you can okay. tell me what you think would be the best approach. 
So the best approach is, because we're talking about sal salvation, ultimately what I want for you and what you would want for me is to get to be with God, right? Paradise. Yeah. We're, we're talking to each other from a position of care and concern about the the hereafter of the other person. This is not like a, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, winning a point or two on an internet, some random stream is irrelevant. I'm trying to help you as an individual. You're trying to help me as an individual. This is why we're having this discussion. So the key is always about salvation. Now, this is what to compare. If you're going to compare anything, that's what you need to compare. So there's a few, I would suggest there's a few ways. Uh, concept of God, the relationship of man to God, um, the mechanism of the salvation, probably three things. And there are, there are other things, but that's, these things are probably sufficient. Now, if you compare these between Judaism, and Christianity and Islam, you really you are going to find that the the Christianity is the odd one out in this. And it doesn't fit the, the 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 message of the prophets from time to now. So the Jews are monotheists, they don't believe, they do not believe in a Trinity. They don't. Muslims are monotheists, we do not believe in a Trinity. Christians are Trinitarian, they believe God is uh, one being in uh, sorry, uh, yeah, one being with three persons, and one of them is manifested on the earth. So this is the odd one out. Jews do not believe in original sin. Muslims don't believe in original sin. Christians believe in original sin, which is a uh, after the sin of Adam in the or the in the Quran calls it a slip uh, in the Garden of Eden. Human beings' nature was changed in some way, and inherently we are all guilty, and we that we are guilty of that sin, or we carry some portion of that sin, or our nature has become such that we cannot be good. Uh, we are we are destined for evil, and man is cut off. From God, from that point, you know, even Eve and uh, Adam and Eve are sent to the earth. Islam, there's a Adam is taught how to seek forgiveness, and they're forgiven. In Christianity, you have the the sending down, but there's no cutting off because the prophets are sent. But in Christianity, there's no way to mend the relationship without the coming of Jesus, peace be upon him. Then this takes us to the mechanism of salvation. Christianity, sorry, Judaism. How do they? You, you seek repentance, and for unintentional sin, you can do sacrifices. So in Leviticus, there are four uh, unintentional. There are four sacrifices that are given. They're all for unintentional sin. There is one exception, but we can get to that if we, if you want to. Judaism. So in Islam, we uh, we have we repent for our sins, and uh, we have a sac We also do sacrifices as well. We can we can give, and the that can also be have a bearing on our sins and, and remove them. Christianity, there is no forgiveness of the sin without the shedding of blood, quoting Hebrews. So we have, again, the odd one out in that conception. So if, so, and so that, and the, uh, for me, the, for me, the fundamental point here is uh, with this crucifixion having to be required, i.e., that there is no removal of sin without the shedding of blood, God is not able to forgive sin. The sin aspect, the, sorry, the forgiveness aspect is taken away. And what do I mean by that? If if I, if Abbas owes me some money and he forgives me, then I don't have to pay him. Nazam doesn't have to pay him. You don't have to pay him. If if Abbas um, owes me money and I can't pay him because I don't have enough, I'm a pauper, and Adam says, Adam, you know, what, Imran, fair enough, we've known each other for five minutes. I'll pay, I'll pay Abbas on your behalf. Oh, there we go. You've paid him. And what that means then, he's received his money. Actually, he's not dispensed any forgiveness. You're not longer accountable. I'm no longer accountable because of your generosity. But the forgive, there was no forgiveness. Why? Because the person demanding the price has been paid. So uh, sorry for talking for so long. I apologize. But I was just laying out. So what I'm highlighting here is, in actually, when you compare the Judeo-Christian, uh, Christiano-Islamic positions, the, the, the odd one out of the three is Christianity. So uh, what are your, th and I think that's a probably a more salvation focused way of looking at um, uh, the, the the comparison. And I think that's a, a more fair way, a juster way. But what what are your thoughts on that comparison that I've made, for example? No, no, that's, do you think? A, that's a very fair, good comparison. Um, you see, I don't want to take up uh, the time of whatever. Well, all the time in the world, uh, uh, Adam, don't worry. Um, no, no, but I mean, I can come on the next time because uh, like to get into the links between Christianity and Judaism would take a lot. Like you, you made the point, for example, that the 
the Tanakh is in no way Trinitarian or there's in no sense a plurality of persons. But you do have verses, for example, like Daniel uh, chapter 7, verses 13 to 15, where there's two divine persons uh, present in this one particular vision. You have another example in Psalm 110. Um, you then have a intra uh, an intra-Trinitarian agreement that you see in something like Zechariah chapter, I think it's chapter 6. Um, so there are there are plenty of examples, but I, I don't want anyone to get into no, that. I understand. Uh, right. just end up, so so what know, I would suggest then, um, because the point that I was making wasn't about uh, can you look back into, can Christians look back into the Old Testament and see things that for them appear to be multi-persons within the creator that was not the point that i was making i was making the point that the, the jews as an archetype are not trinitarian they don't believe in multiple persons in god they don't believe in that and muslims don't believe in multiple persons within god either mm -hmm. and so this is why they, they would this is the monotheism part of it that i i don't doubt that you can look at things with a and i would would respectfully say with a with a trinitarian lens and come up with things that this could be an example and this could and i'm happy for you to come on uh, you know i'd love for you to come on because you, it seems to be we're able to talk in a reasonable way and in go through these things within depth because we can all and i could be wrong you, could, you know we can all learn from each other and I think that would be a good and fruitful, uh, useful conversation. But I think the, the main point is, is that the, when you look at the beliefs of the Jews and the beliefs of the Muslims and the beliefs of the Christians and compare them from a salvific, salvific perspective, the odd one out is Christianity. Um, so it's up to you. You can either you can continue. Uh, Brother Nazim, any thoughts you want to add to that? I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that at all. Or just a comparison um, between Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Yeah, I, I guess one major difference, which is a discontinuation between the Old and the New Testament, is that the Old Testament um, says that the son shall not bear the guilt of the father and vice versa. And, you know, children will not be put to death for the sins of the father. Um, and, uh, the you know, the, the New Testament teaches the sacrificial death of Jesus, Jesus paying the price uh, for the sins of others. But that's like a discontinuity. Whereas the Quran says no, no guilt bearer shall, shall bear the guilt of another. So the Quran is showing like a continuation between the Old Testament and the Quran. Whereas the New Testament in this specific regard seems to be showing a discontinuation or a contradiction. Um, but, you know, with regards to like, you know, prophets in the Old Testament, um, the, the prophets in the Old Testament are very uh, bloody. So they very much like go to war, and the Old Testament is like a very b bloody uh, b book. Um, so much so that um, a Christian apologist by the name of um, or a Christian debater by the name of J. Smith um, says that the Old Testament is a more violent book than the Quran. But what's interesting is that if you do a comparison of prophets of how they appear in the Quran and in the Bible, the prophets appear more of men of peace. Uh, they're not violent. So Moses is like a man of peace in the Quran, and so is David. But it, it, the the Old Testament like gives a different picture portrayal of them. Um, whereas um, if if the Prophet peace be upon him, the Prophet of Islam was a violent individual, then he wouldn't made make Moses and David as being more peaceful th than himself. But he would have also showed them to be violent, just like in the Bible. So as to justify his own apparent uh, violence. Um, and the book of Hebrews, as I understand it in the New Testament, uh, refers to like these patriarchs, like in Hebrews chapter 11, as men of faith and as examples. And even in um, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 verse 16, says like all scripture is God breathed and inspired and is helpful for teaching us righteousness. Um, uh, so so um, the, the Old Testament is like meant to be an example where you can take uh, inspiration from as being like um, for your faith or for righteousness. And um, nowhere like um, in the Bible, it, either in the Old or in the New Testament, does it condemn Moses for like committing genocide or, or David, for example, 
committing violence against innocent people. Like, you know, you have like 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse, so chapter 15 verse 3 that um, commands, you know, to kill the, the babies or the infants here. And nowhere does in the New Testament does Jesus condemn this. Um, in fact, the opposite, um, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 3, um, Jesus actually criticizes the Jews uh, for disobeying the commandment of God about uh, putting to death your children. Because um, Jesus says, for example, that um, Moses or God says to honor your father and mother and whoever dishonors their parents shall be put to death. Um, so Moses says that you disobey God, whereas you instead follow your man-made tradition. So Jesus seems to uphold, apparently upholds the death penalty for disobedient children. Um, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 3, um, of course, Muslims would question this, whether this is like an authentic saying. Um, but, uh, I, 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 you know, this is another way in which the Quran is showing that um, you know, the prophets are men of peace and like Islam is religion of peace. Like in chapter 2 of verse 208, it tells Muslims, all oh, you who believe, to enter into peace completely. Um, and also, I just wanted to just quickly um, respond to like the Philippians and the Daniel point. Um, Philippians, like grammatically, is written in the present tense. And um, it, it, it's an allusion to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12. So when it says that Jesus emptied himself, it doesn't mean he gave up his divinity, but it's alluding to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, where it refers to the suffering servant as pouring out their life. Um, so it's kind of drawing that illusion. It's not saying that he's God, but there's still servitude in Philippians chapter 2 because um, the, the Jesus um, himself um, doesn't exhort himself, but it's God the Father who raises him to like a higher position and um, even and it ends by saying that um this is done for the glory of god the father rather than god the son um and, and daniel chapter 7 is basically speaking about the saints of israel or the saints of the most high god you just have to read the context and it's the ancient of day who gives them power and dominion of authority and in isaiah um in the book of isaiah it says that Israel is like worshipped by the other nations, like they supplicate to them. And in the book of Revelation, the church is like the new Israel in which they're worshipped by the Jews, like the Satan or synagogue um, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Um, so those were just some of the points that came up in my mind that I'd like to respond. Uh, Adam, would you like to come back on any of those things? I, mean, I, think, I, think, we've, I think we've thrown too much. There's a no, lot of information. Lot. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what I was thinking. It's like a, yeah. a, a telephone yeah. book. Uh, what, what I'll say is, I'll just say this quickly because I can come on the next time. Um, but I'll write down the two points. So, uh, like the, the points that Imran was making about the, you know, Christianity being the odd one out amidst um, Judaism and Islam. Um, and then the, the the stuff you were telling me about, um, you know, the, the context of, for example, Daniel chapter 7. I mean, if we look at something like Mark chapter 14, verse 62, when Jesus claims to be the one like the Son of Man, uh, he's claiming to be the divine person. And it's for that reason that they want to stone him. But I, 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 there's no point in getting into this discussion now because it's just going to take way too long. And I've, I've taken up too much of your time anyway. No guys. problem. Um, Adam, Adam, like, Adam, I'd, like to, I'd like to just before you go, Adam, just maybe a couple of more things just for you to reflect upon. Um, Could we invite Adam to our because we're go, actually going through the Old Testament uh, prophecies. So we yeah. actually done, we've done a, we've done a few streams on them. We've done Daniel seven. We've done Daniel nine. We're going through them. So you're welcome to. You, I mean, that's that's going to be the, uh, every other Sunday. So you're welcome to come on to that because. This is really specifically on the point. Just saves you sort of trying to bring all the information at once. You can focus your time for the particular discussion. Yep. Um, and you, we'll prioritize you because we know that you've come on and we've given you lots of information. And we don't want you to go away thinking they didn't let me speak because I, you know, I don't want you to have that point yep. of view. Yeah, sorry, brother Abbas, please. No, on. no, that's fine. Jazakallah uh, khair to all the panels, mashallah. A lot of uh, things to contemplate and learn there. Sorry, Adam, if we sort of. Uh, uh, through everything, including the kitchen sink at you. I mean, it, it's probably a lot to absorb and, and go no, through. It, but... it, creates, it creates a good dialogue. I mean, we've more to yeah. discuss. So. 
Yeah, just a couple of things, really. I wanted to just uh, note uh, as well, Adam, and, and Jazakallah to Imran for pointing out uh, the initial premises, which I think are very important. But um, do you believe that whenever God commands anything, that Jesus is always in agreement with that, or do they disagree? Um, well, in, in, in the Trinitarian view, it's the one will, so... There, so, there would be no disagreement they, because the three persons are always in perfect harmony and unity with one another. OK, so when in the old, uh, please don't take this as, a, as, a, as an attack. I'm, I'm just asking you to reflect upon this and maybe you can come back on it next time. Yep. But when when the, when children are ordered to be killed in the Old Testament, it's the same Jesus in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Therefore, Jesus was completely at one with accepting that notion of killing or that order of killing babies and children and animals and everything that were wiped off. Would you, would you accept that, that Jesus would have had to have agreed to that? So which one are you referring to uh, specifically? Which if you look at the Amal Amalekites and they were killed, they were, they were, they were massacred. And, and basically all those girls, young women or young girls, girls who had not known a man, they yeah. were saved and they were distributed amongst, they were ordered to be distributed amongst the people. Um, that mass killing, including the killing of animals and, and everything else, even the donkeys, the asses, nothing was spared. Mm -hmm. By what you've said, Jesus would have to be in agreement with that, with the Father, with the Holy Ghost, right? Yeah. So so, so now you, you do not find anything in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he actually ordered such an event. In fact, what you find is that even on a battlefield, Adam, you're not permitted to kill children, women, uh, anyone who's a non-combatant. You can't kill the monks or the rabbis or people who, who are scholars, basically. You cannot desecrate, desecrate the, um, the houses of worship, for example. And you can't even cut down trees. Yep. And you can't even fight women, let alone kill them. You're not even permitted to fight them. So mm -hmm. we find the exact opposite teaching in, in Islam from the, from, the, from the lips of the Prophet ﷺ. And in fact, the companions were often in the people before they went into battle. They were reminded, do not attack the women, do not attack the children, do not attack the, rabbi, the, the, the priests or the monks and what have you. So... And, and you can only fight those who fight you. And, and if they surrender, there's a different process of handling that. You can't just massacre people everywhere. So what I'm trying to explain to you, um, Adam, and I'd like you to reflect upon that, um, is that clearly we actually see, if we, if we look at that teaching, it's very, very different, Adam, from what we find in the Old Testament, which is what Jesus would have had to agree to agree upon. And he, he, he would have had to have sanctioned according to you because him and his will and God's will and the Holy Ghost, their will is all one will, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. well, that's what's one point. The other point, uh, Adam, is that th there's a certain notion that often Christians talk about. God is just all love. God is just all of this. But again, looking at these events, uh, Adam, you can also attribute, well, God has a wrath. God has punishment. You, there, and, and according to you, of course, we don't agree that Moses would have ever killed children because in Islam, we don't believe any of the prophets behaved in that way. Actually, we we actually hold the prophets to a much a greater reverence and purity because we believe that Allah purified them and they never committed any sin and whatever minor mistakes they made or things that were done accidentally that they were forgiven for. But so the point I'm trying to make to you, Adam, is that um, when you, when we make that comparison then to the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and, and some of the things that are mentioned in the old Testament, you know, they're, they're completely, completely different, Adam. So I'd like you to, I mean, just contemplate on that. Think about that. Um, and, you know, come back to us, of course, on that yep. if you want to. Yeah? But yeah these, the, like these things, they have a very specific context. But, you know, it's it's way too much to discuss right now. No, I, mean, I understand. No, but Adam, you know what it is, Adam? If one says that, look, mass killing and murder has a context, and even though Jesus sanctioned it, there's a context behind it, 
effectively, Adam, what you're saying is if there is a context, then war is acceptable uh, and killing is acceptable. And if that's your paradigm, then you should have no problem with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saying that there is war. And if you are attacked, you are you can defend yourself. And and and, and Islam actually does have an expansion expansion of war as well. It can have, but it can also have treaties which it must adhere to. Uh, and 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 Islam Islam is Islam will do whatever is beneficial for the people, for the Muslims, and for the people generally. So if there's a nation, for example, where a, ty a tyrannical king is ruling that nation and the people are oppressed, yes, the Muslim armies can go, out, go in and actually relieve those people from that tyranny. You see, so, so and what I'm trying to say to you, Adam, is that is, if when we apply Islam to actual life events where people are, some bad people may attack you. They may conduct warfare. They may want to wipe you off. They may want to, God forbid, rape your women and kill your children. Islam has a solution to that. But if you were to, if you were to simply say, no, we've just got to turn the other cheek because that's what Jesus said. Well, basically what you're saying is that let the women get raped, let the children get killed, uh, let us get massacred. Let us get overridden. Um, despite this being completely unjust and unfair, we're just going to turn the other cheek. We're not. We're just going to lay as lambs for the slaughter. But the but the po the point also, Adam, is that no Christian country, Adam, operates like that. They have armies. They have air forces. They have navies. They have things because they realise that there are some bad people out there. And unfortunately, sometimes they become the bad people by going and doing horrible things to others. But that's a different that's a different thing altogether. But I just want you to think about a couple of these things that we've mentioned. I don't want to sort of, uh, you know, stretch the, the thing out too long. But but just just think about that. And, and by all means, come back to us as well. And we'd be happy to have you on. You're a very, uh, uh, a very uh, well mannered, very uh, you know nice person to speak to. And I think it's lovely to have you on. And uh, and next time, you know, by all means, we, we'd love to hear more of what you have to say as well. We don't want it to just be all one sided and and we'll, we'll give you a much, uh, you know, hopefully a much bigger opportunity to sort of say. A so, lot don't, so don't take any of this as an, an attack. Personally, we're not doing that. We, uh, yeah. the, the attention was just to lay out some information. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and we, we don't, we're, we're not joking when we say that if you were to come on a, any of our streams, we'd prioritize a discussion with you. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to take any individual point out, if you want to say, look, I just want to discuss this point, we're happy just to narrow it down so that it can be more fruitful. But don't feel you have to go and do loads of research to get everything to come all at once. Uh, if you say, look, guys, I'm, I've done a research just into this point, let's talk about this, we're happy to limit it to that because, like I said, I do feel we've given a lot and I don't want you to be yeah. thinking that we're sort of you know saying stuff to you without letting you reply because I know you may have your own thoughts and ideas about this, but... Uh, you, it's been it's been very interesting. Uh, feel free to come back again. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put up our email here, and the reason for that is if ever, if ever you're thinking about coming on and you want to know when a particular stream is, or you're ready yep. to talk about something, um, you can just email us and we'll let you know the timings. Because sometimes we do do last minute sort of um, timings. Sometimes we try not to do that, but it sometimes happens. And it's just efdower at gmail.com and what we will do is we'll let you know specifically maybe a month in advance what our timings are so you have enough time to maybe prepare for any particular point yeah thank you so much guys yeah, i really no appreciate problem. it um you know er everything that you said all the information that you gave guys and um no what i'll do is for the next time because uh, you know it's impossible to to cover you know when you're given so much yeah, to get yeah. to everything sure. um so we'll try and just next time um we'll try and just focus in on some of on some things hopefully and, and get to them no together. We, we can let we what we can do we'll we'll let you set that just email us and we'll let you set that particular point that yeah. look guys i've looked into this can we yeah. talk about this and then we're happy to go that yeah. way ad yeah, yeah. That's lovely to speak to you. Take care. Wish oh, you all the best. It's really nice to have you on. Uh, really, really nice to have you on, and we'll be happy to have you on again. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, guys. Take bye. Care. bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, what a lovely young man. Good. It's nice to have a uh, you know, nice to have somebody who's at least willing to. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, he did a lot of listening rather than talking. He did. He did. He really did. Yeah. 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 And, and that's you literally. 
you, you know, you the uh, Christian encyclopedia, and I, even I was like spinning after the end of that. <laughs> so, I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, it was a bit like, was like, so like when he gives all those references one after the other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Naz, Nazam Naik. It was it was lovely to hear you. I'm, I'm gonna because I've spoken so much, and as I'm uh, and they ask you by the Abbas, I'll let you carry oh, yeah. on next. We have uh, we have Jerry. We have, uh, Let's have Jerry on. Jerry yeah. on Jerry. Can you just give us a, a quick uh, thumbs up? Lovely. We're going to get you on next, Jerry. You can leave your camera on, or you can turn it off. Whatever you find um, is convenient for you. All right, Jerry. So uh, welcome to the stream. Oh, thank you so much for welcoming, guys. Uh, I don't know what's the time there, like at your place, but uh, I'm from India, basically. So it's kind of midnight here, like around 4 a.m. in the morning. So yeah, my voice here as might, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, my voice might be a little dull. So, uh, you know, uh, sorry for the you know, inconveniences. If in, in any case, my voice is not audible, like, you know, so. You're very clear at the moment. Uh, all right. So uh, I got a couple of questions, basically, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm watching your videos and, you know, your streams for a bit long of time, but uh, something, you know, I felt to discover about my religion. So starting from the background, like about myself, so I belong from a Hindu family, actually, I, I was brought, brought up in a Hindu family, but uh, I'd, I wasn't satisfied with the, you know, religion and cultures being taught to me. So then I started to follow Christianity because, uh, I, I think that Jesus is the only way for salvation and um, the way he died for us, you know, on the cross, you know. So he teaches us the way that everyone of us has to carry the cross in our life. And, you know, so that's the thing I'm more inspired into. So my first question to you is that uh, why should someone follow Islam and not Christianity or some other religion? So can you answer to my that question? Do you have any other questions, uh, Jerry? Oh uh, yes, I do. I'll just go one by one, so I'm not. So just let us know what your questions are. We can maybe try and uh, cover more than one base. Uh, all right then. So I think to honest with you, in the, in the discussion we've just had, we probably covered a lot of that. But um, yeah, yeah. tell me your other question. We can try and maybe add extra bits in, so it becomes more fruitful. So one well, is why uh, why Islam uh, as compared to Christianity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what was the other question? The other question is that uh, do you consider Google, like when you search something on Google, it can be anything like as a reliable source of information, like, you know, like for the common people like us, but like if we don't find an answer to any of our questions, we just go to Google and search it on. So do you believe that what we search on Google is correct or it's not? Okay, so, I'll, I'll let the other answer. brothers. Is that, was that, are they related together, are they? Or? Okay. Okay, so, well, I'll let uh, uh, Brother Nazim or Brother Ijaz, Brother Abbas, please go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll join in in a moment. Thanks. Well, uh, one of the things I'd like to just say to Jerry is that, Jerry, when it comes to conducting yourself completely in your life, and what do I mean by that? It yeah. means that, you know, guidance, guidance in terms of saving you from things that are harmful, detrimental mm -hmm. to your psychology your physiology you know your physical well-being spiritual well-being uh, your mental well-being i would say if you look at christianity what does it what does it talk about what does it say about all of these things M much of what christians do today is down to what country or government they live under and mm -hmm. the social consensus of that country often guides them in terms of what is moral or immoral, what is just and unjust. So where is the guidance, you see? Now, if you look at Islam, not only does it have a very clear-cut notion of what God is, who God is, but it also has a very clear-cut uh, you know, way of life in terms of what is good for you and what is harmful for you. And I don't think that really with, with Christianity you get that. And this is why, Jerry, you know what you find now is you find churches putting up LGBTQ plus whatever fl flags and banners that, because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to handle these things. And under public pressure, they're often going against teachings, explicit teachings in, in the Old Testament or the New Testament. 
because they just have to keep bending the rules because this 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 mix of 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 societal norms, societal uh, you know laws and um, culture, and with the religious aspects, when you start mixing the two together, it's very dangerous. Because what's now happened is the balance has gone completely the other way, where cultural norms and, you know, uh, societal uh, consensus often overrides the religious aspects of, of, of Christianity. But in Islam, what you have is that you have guidance and you have to stick to it. And it doesn't matter whether the whole world says, oh, you guys are so backwards you know, you don't accept these people or you don't accept those people or you don't accept this way of life or you don't accept that way of life. We say that our guidance comes from Allah, from the creator and from the one that Allah sent, the prophet, peace be upon him. And we don't rely, we don't care what people think. We don't care if we get extra searches at the airport because, you know, our sisters are wearing a hijab or I have a beard or I have a Muslim name, right? It doesn't bother us it, um, um, to the extent where we're not going to give up our religion. We're not going to give up our principles. Alhamdulillah, most of us, we won't do that. But the problem is that the, the Christian now, Jerry, is, pre is pressured. He's pressured so much by society to conform that often his religion takes a backseat. Going completely against the, 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 the commandments and the laws of, of God Almighty as they would perceive them to be uh, in the Bible. So this is this is really what I would say. But please do come back to me, Jerry, if you disagree with what I'm saying. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a question here. Like, as you said, it all comes from the almighty Allah, what you believe in. So uh, unlike like other religions, so Christianity is also a religion where we also believe in the father almighty. Right. So if you see in uh, Muslims or in Islam or in Christianity, both like people of both beliefs to believe in the Almighty Father, right? So you just call them, call the Father as uh, Allah, but we call him as Father. So that's the only difference. But other thing is that we worship Jesus because Jesus, we consider him as a son of God, which is, which you guys don't agree with. So is it wrong? Like uh, along with, if we worship the Father, we also worship his son. Is it like incorrect in some way? Like I mean, I mean look, I, 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 Jerry, I will, I will deal with that question. But I hope you appreciate that the the point that I raised, you, you've yeah. sort of completely sidetracked and haven't really dealt with it. I, I've said to you that Islam is a complete way of life with guidance that corrects and saves you from things that are harmful mm -hmm. and takes you towards things that are beneficial. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you at least see that that is the case? Muslims, to be a Muslim is like a way of life. It's not just um, but it's not just belief, but there's actions involved there as well, and those actions are fundamentally what save you from many of the the, the perils of society as they exist today, many of the pitfalls, many of the problems that are arising in society, and Islam actually protects you from those things. For example, intoxicants, including alcohol, gambling, interest, sexual immorality, you know, having sex before marriage, all of these things, right? These are very fundamental within Islamic, um, uh, you know, and interest, saving us from, from usury, right? These are fundamental things that are destroying society at the moment, including many others. Where, where are the answers for all of these things within Christianity? So you mean to say like these things doesn't exist in Christianity? Like we don't have that guidance, the you know, well, teaching. Well, well tell me tell me what the teaching in, in, in the Bible is for intoxicants. Oh, uh, like the, the one that you mentioned, the uh, you give an example that you know, premarital sex or it's not it's considered like against in islam so the this is the same thing we have in christianity as well although people if they sin but they can get the salvation even if they sin from jesus because jesus is the only way like from there we, we can achieve the salvation we can get our sins forgiven but, no, but in, jerry, uh, the point, jerry the point i raised to you was intoxicants where is the for drugs and alcohol where is the protection for the people? Because remember, there are hundreds of millions of people affected adversely. Mm -hmm. In England alone, we have 100,000 families 
where one or both parents are alcoholics and the children are the children are living in a family where one or or both of the parents are alcoholics where is the protection for this well you know i don't have a you know a straight answer for this but i just say that uh, in, in our religion it at least give us the freedom like to choose what we love or to do what we like you know love to do exactly but, jerry like, exactly but jerry that's the point human beings mankind will will in, almost invariably always choose things that are harmful and are, are, are you know are are, are, are are a vice are a problem and this is why we have an alcohol problem this is why we have a drug problem because human beings can't help themselves and this is where guidance comes in but the other thing i think let's move on from that point because you mentioned about yeah. uh, about god and that our belief of god and your belief of god is very very similar and that you worship jesus right but what i'd like to do rather than answer that question as well cuz i think i've spoken quite a lot i'm going to get brother nazam or brother ijaz perhaps to come in there and deal with that part of your question if that's okay so do you want right. to just repeat that part if they, if they haven't heard it and asam have you heard what he, the brother said oh uh, yeah the question was basically um, why should i choose islam over christianity basically yeah or why should i be a muslim instead of a christian yeah um yeah. so if you actually meet many uh, muslim converts uh, who are from a christian background and if you listen to the reasons for becoming muslim um many of them will say that they feel like they're now a better christian after becoming muslim uh, because um if you actually investigate like the historical teachings of jesus um you'll find that um jesus didn't teach nor was he like how the the, the church now represents him to be so what orthodox or mainstream christianity teaches about jesus is that he's a member of the trinity he's part of the godhead um and, and also that jesus uh, died or paid for people's sins um so these teachings are actually alien or foreign to to judaism and jesus was born as a first century jew uh within that context and also um if you look at the historical jesus um jesus never taught the trinity nor did he believe that he was god um so the word christian itself means someone who imitates jesus someone who is christ like who walks the, the 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 talk um who says what jesus says so jesus never says that i'm a member of the trinity but he says god is one so when he's asked about the first commandment he says the lord our god the lord is one um when he's asked about like what should, what must i do to be safe um he says that you should obey or keep the commandments and the first commandment is that you should have only one god um and um whereas um if you go to like other parts like of the new testament and also the the teaching of the church um if you ask them like what is the first commandment and what must a person do to be saved um they will say something like you must accept jesus as your savior as your lord and that you should uh believe that god resurrected or raised jesus from the dead uh whereas this is um, not anything that jesus says that this is for salvation but instead like jesus says like in matthew uh chapter 19 verses 17 and forward um that if you if the if you want eternal life then obey or keep the commandments and um when jesus was asked what was the greatest commandment in Ma- in the gospel of mark in mark chapter 12 verse 29 um jesus says the first commandment or the greatest commandment is hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one so notice jesus didn't jesus didn't say you should accept him as lord but he says that um um our god including himself um is is the one lord um and yes um it would be wrong to worship jesus along with god um this for muslim amounts to like being polytheism the polytheism isn't just the belief in many gods but polytheism also includes worshiping others along with god so um we we would say um not you worship jesus but 
worship the one who Jesus needs to worship during his lifetime, which was God, um, whom you refer to as the Father. Uh, okay, so with due respect to what you explained, I do agree with that to an extent. But uh, when you said that in the Bible, Jesus never mentions or says that I am God or worship me. So if you think logically in that sense, like anyone, if someone says that I'm God, worship me, do, would you really worship him? Like, the, does that make sense? Like in that scenario. So, but indirectly, if you see, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, verses in the Bible where it's been clearly noticed that Jesus is God and he has, you know, directed himself as the son of God. So I'll just give you one example when, uh, you know, it's been said that he was both God's son and God himself, which is mentioned in uh, the Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 16. And uh, yes, he was fully man, but also fully God, which was mentioned in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah, Along so the... you know the point about... Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, Babaji. I'll just quickly respond to the point about if a, pa if a man told you that he's God, you wouldn't accept it. And the reason why you wouldn't accept it is because it's irrational. Um, you, 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 you know, like a human being cannot be God because he's limited, he's finite. You know, he has needs and desires, whereas God yes. is free from any of these deficiencies or imperfection. And also, you know, that the Bible, you know, the scripture you know, tells us that God isn't a man. Um, that he he's he's not like he's he's transcendent, and God you know will not become a man like in in one Kings chapter eight verse twenty two, um and um yeah yes yeah, so, uh, that, that that's the only thing I want to say. But brother Ijaz, go ahead. Yeah um I I'll just take like a minute if that's okay. Usually when I say that it lasts an hour. So, uh Jerry uh let's uh, let's strap in for this uh. I missed most of the conversation because I was writing a really long tweet, which I suggest everyone go and like and retweet. Thank you. Secondly, uh, Jerry, can you do me a favor? Do, do yeah. you agree with me that there is a shift, a significant shift in understanding whether God is one person and never human and God is three persons and at some point a human? Is there a shift in that understanding? Uh, I couldn't get your question, honestly. Okay. The Jewish people, they believe that God was physically immaterial and one person, mm. historically, right? Okay. Right. And then the transition to Trinitarianism would be that they had to learn and understand that God was not one person who was immaterial, but three persons and at one time material. Would you agree? That there's that shift? Oh uh, yeah, it's kind of like uh, I'll just present an example, like you know, water, right? So water is present in three forms, like yeah. it's in Jerry, gas, it's in liquid. Jerry, pause. Like, I'm not asking you to explain yeah. the Trinity to me. I'm asking if you accept. Please forgive me. If you accept that there's a shift in understanding from Jewish monotheism to Christian Trinitarianism, that they're not the same belief but that one is there initially and then there's the other. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, I don't know what the Jews believed about that because uh, we are talking about the Christians right now. So, uh, okay. like... uh, do, do me a favor, Jerry. Do Jews today, Jews today, pharisaical, Sahidic Jews, do they believe that God is more than one person? No. No, okay. Do Christians believe that God is more than one person? No. Yeah, three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. No, it's not a person. Like you, okay. can, you can't consider the Holy Spirit as a person. Like there's a completely okay, different Jerry, approach. Forget the Holy Spirit. Do you yeah. agree that Christians, Nicene Christians, Trinitarian Christians, believe that God is three persons? Oh uh, yeah, like uh, not person, but he's in three avatars, or you can say in three forms. But I will not take the word as person because okay, person well, the means Greek word person. used is prosopon, which literally translates to person. Okay. Okay. So understand yeah. what I'm saying. Is there a shift between those two views that they're not the same view but different views? Okay. Do you agree or disagree with that? I agree to that. Oh, you agree to that? Good. The second point is, we had so many points. The second point is that Jesus in the Gospels, 
is he describes himself as the only teacher of the disciples. Are yeah. you familiar with that? For you have yeah, one teacher, the Messiah. You agree he says that? Yeah. Okay, good. So here's the thing. I go back to the four Gospels, and I'm looking to see where Jesus goes to these, you know, village, these villages with Jews who believe that God is not a man, that God is only one person, and that he doesn't have a body. And I don't see him moving from that belief to the Trinitarian belief that historical Christians have believed in. We don't see that shift in understanding. He doesn't teach them, oh, this is what God is traditionally understood as, but here is how you should understand him. Do we see that transition? Yes. From what he teaches? Jesus, you mean? Yeah. God is in like three three persons, three forms. Yeah. Do you do you find yeah. that shift that Jesus teaches that? Yeah, himself? yeah, yeah. I did. I did. Jesus teaches that he, there are three persons. He he clearly doesn't say that, but if you okay. see what according to his teachings, he does he does refer to the Father, like you know. No, the no, Lord. not understand what I'm saying, Jerry. Three persons, as Trinitarian Christians typically understand it, three individuals with their own intention and will that are co-equal and that coexist and have co-powers. Understand that. That's a very specific belief. Do we find that Jesus makes that transition in teaching from mono Jewish monotheism to Christian Trinitarianism? Do we find that transition from him? Maybe yes, but I'm not sure about that. So I'll tell you how the answer is no. When you were trying to respond to Nazam on who Jesus was, about Jesus being God in the Bible, you went to Colossians. You went to Timothy. Why didn't mm -hmm. you go to the four Gospels to quote Jesus himself? If Jesus made those same points, wouldn't it be reasonable you would go to his words first? Yes or no? Is that well, reasonable or not? Yeah, yeah, it is. Right. So then you don't go to where Jesus teaches that in those words because he doesn't, right? Okay, but but Jesus <laughs> neither says the opposite, like, you know, what you mentioned. He does. He, doesn't, he... he does. That's the point. I can show you where he says the opposite. He says the father only, the son only knows what the father teaches him. That the son can only know what he sees the father doing and he does. That the father gives the son glory. The glory that, so Jesus did not have these things innately. It's given to him. He's originated. But you can't show me the ideas that you find in Timothy and in Colossians and in Philippians and in Romans. You don't find that on the lips of Jesus in the Gospels. That's a problem for you. Why? Right? Because so, if so, Jesus himself, let me just make the point. If Jesus yeah. himself does not make that transition, why do you? Got it. Why do you? Am I, am I muted? Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm hearing you. I'm just thinking. Yes. So, yeah, so why do you make that transition when Jesus himself doesn't? Okay, I'll leave it there. Well, you, I'll listen to yeah. your response, but I'm going to mute myself if that's okay. So I agree to what uh, it just, you know, mentioned his statement to my points, you know, my, I mentioned before. Uh, so, yeah, he... Jesus does say that, you know, the father has given him the authority. And here we can at least see that he's a son of God. He's referring himself as a son of God. You know, that point. 
just gets cleared here that he considers himself as a son of God, or he's indirectly referring him as a son of God, right? So apart from that, there are more other, you know, uh, mentions in the Bible. If you see that he did say that he existed before Abraham in John chapter 8, verse 58 as well. Apart from that, um, he has the power, like he says, like, you know, uh, mentions that he has the powers to answer prayers and, you know. Uh, Jerry, sure. pause. Jerry, pause. Jesus in John 5 says he can only do what the Father teaches him. God does not begin to possess abilities. He eternally possesses them. So if the Father gives Jesus this authority and power, God can't be given these things. He eternally has them. And if you did want to discuss John chapter 8, when Jesus speaks to the Pharisees and says, before Abraham I was, go click on the Greek and read it for yourself. He says, before Abraham was born, I existed. That's what the Greek says. Yeah. Before yeah. Abraham was born, not before Abraham began to exist in the spiritual realm, not before the foundations of the world, before Abraham was born. And I could be wrong, <laughs> but Abraham was not the first creation. So that point goes but, against you, not for you. If you will but, yeah. adhere to the Bible, what the Bible says. I'm going to mute myself because I... Uh, uh, I'm just going to listen because uh, I think the time is almost up. So I'm going to release you to the brothers. You can hug and give them kisses. I'm okay with it. Okay, Jerry, do you mind if I, because um, I, I also missed the beginning of this, um, but I heard Brother Nazem and Brother Ijaz, uh, a bit of a bass as well. So you you said you were from a Hindu family and that's when I left. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. So why did you leave Hinduism? What was the reason? Uh, well, I don't believe in multiple gods, like to be honestly, you know, I've heard that there are three like twenty three more than three lakh thirty thirty thousand gods. Like is it serious? Like what, I can't, I can't believe in what, Yeah, sure. What's the problem with multiple gods, Cherry? I, I like you can't like pray to different gods at different times. You understand? Like there's only one God according to me. Like, you know, there's only one God. And that's the only thing that, you know, I had the one God concept. Like, I can't believe it multiple gods. And the teachings but in Hindus, Hinduism... Uh, well, you correct me if I'm wrong, but Hindus believe, believe in the ultimate God, which is Brahma. Uh, no, it's not. And, if you see... Uh, who is no. the, who's the ultimate God in Christianity? There's one, uh, Brahma. I, I believe it's Brahma, but you can tell me because you're a Hindu, isn't it? You were a Hindu, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was. A, so it's not because... Uh, in Hindus, there are like the differentiations, like in people who believe there is Krishna, there is Brahma, there is Shiva, sure. there is like I don't, I don't know, there's infinite gods. Like I can't. So there's the, absolutely, that. absolutely. So yeah. the the there is an ultimate being which is Brahma, the world soul. No, they consider it as uh, Paramatma, like you know, it's yeah, the Paramatma, yeah, the the, yeah, the yeah, divine, yeah. yeah. And then what happen, How are these other gods? Uh, how do they come about? What are they called? So uh, people say that, you know, Paramatma is the ultimate God and he came down to earth in different times in different avatars. You know, okay, so what do you, so these are avatars, yeah? Yeah. What's another way of saying avatar? Uh, in different forms, like, uh, let's say, like, um, see, uh, the, what people say, like, for example, there's a story for, there's a uh, God called Lord Rama, okay? So people say that Rama was, like, God, real God. Like, he came down to Earth to rescue his wife from, you know, on the country, like Sri Lanka. Sure, so I understand. There, you're you're, you're yeah, sort of yeah. missing the question a little bit. So yeah. there is a, an ultimate being in Christianity. I'm talking about Hinduism here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is an ultimate being, the Brahmatma, you were saying. Who yeah. comes down to Earth to help the people with all to, to solve a problem on the Earth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to say this is respectfully. I'm not saying this, but yeah. What's the difference between this and Christianity? Um, Christianity, there's only one Jesus, but in no, uh... no. there are. We have God the Father. Yeah, and you have a being that comes down to the Earth. Yeah, yeah? which is Jesus, so and you have the Holy, that... and and you have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Holy Spirit is within us. Like Jesus was conceived through the Holy Spirit. Like it was. Sure, no, I understand. Us. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. But what you have is, and this is the this is one, and this is why I'm telling you this. Yeah. You you yeah. seem to have made progress in your journey from uh, multiple millions of avatars to three or two. This is progress. 
because you you understand from your internal self you know yeah. actually there can't be millions it doesn't make sense right yeah yeah but what you're still holding on to what you still seem to be holding on to is that yeah no there's a, there can be an avatar it's just jesus that's it i understand so you've gone from millions to one or two let's just let's just say one i'll give you because you don't say you say the holy spirit is something else okay fair, fair enough I'll, i won't put that on yeah. you but you've gone from a million avatars to just one avatar yeah so what's the difference that's the difference what you yourself said like from millions of avatars to one avatar so there's a huge difference like when you you know pray to one avatar and at the same time are, pray are any of the avatars actually god in hinduism oh like could you repeat that pardon me are any of the avatars are any of the avatars god any of the for example lord shiva god yeah yeah lord shiva then lord the brahma that one or okay, let's just take let's take one so let's let's uh, cuz i'm cuz i'm i want you to i'm trying to make a little point here that's going to yeah, be yeah. very significant yeah yeah and i'm just and i'm just trying to help you so you've gone from multiple millions of gods who uh, sorry mil, uh, a god who can manifest in millions of avatars yeah and then you have now a god who can come as one avatar now i would yeah. say there's no no difference between them why am i saying this because you're still you're doing one thing that happens in all of them that something in the creation is being worshiped okay and whether that's a man or whether that's you know whatever else you want to you know whatever the different manifestations were there's something in the creation that's being worshiped but there's a difference you, let's look at the so look at the yeah. 10 commandments yeah do you know the 10 commandments oh yes i do I, i don't know all of them but i know seven the first so. just the first two most the first or the first one even which one what would you say oh like i need to say them in like order like in sequence no no just the ones that come to your mind just tell me Oh uh, so one of the commandment is that um, how shall have no gods other than me you know uh, before me or other than me that's okay. one of the Okay so now you should have no other gods before me yeah 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 does it say before uh, so I want you to understand does it say before us Oh uh, what do you mean like does it say you will have no other gods before us No it says before me me the one person yes Yeah 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 one individual yeah yeah okay yeah then what's the second so what's the second commandment uh how shall not kill that's one i no no it's one of the commandment like how shall not yeah kill. it is it is one of them but it's not the second one um uh maybe that uh, honor thy father uh so and no, thy that's one of them but it's not the second one um how so shall not steal no that's one of them but it's not the second one okay okay So the second one is and I'll, I'll tell you is you shall not make for yourself a mm. carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above that mm. is on the earth beneath or that is in the water below you shall mm. not bow down to them nor serve them for I the Lord am a jealous god okay. So what is what's being said to you here what is the I want you to understand this commandment what is being said to you here we can't form any image of other like you know apart from him like you know i can't no 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 it doesn't say it doesn't say other you shall not make for and i'm and I, let me just I'll, because i don't want you to think i'm just saying this for my i'm going to bring it up here yeah yeah Sh- share the screen uh window and i think this is the one where is it gone there it is second commandment here exodus 24 that's uh, sorry 20 from verse 4 You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in the heaven above or what is on the earth beneath or what is in the water below you shall not bow down to them or serve them for I the Lord your God am a jealous God Okay now I want you to I want you to explain to me because now it's not saying that you can't make it it's not saying you can make images of me but no one else like it can't worship yeah it can't serve someone else like apart not 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 someone else if it's saying you cannot make for yourself a carved image of or any likeness of anything let me bring that okay. to you again i'm just going i'm going to just show it to you again yeah 
And let me present that. And I'm going to just share the screen. And I'm just going to show you this again. Because I don't want you to think I'm making this up, yeah? So hopefully okay. this is... Uh, uh, let me just make it a bit bigger. And it says here, you shall... And I'm going to try and just hide it. You, can, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything. Anything. And then it clarifies this. That is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water below. And then it further clarifies, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. So what does this mean here? You shall not make for yourself a, a like a, a, of, of, of anything. He's referring something like indirectly, but exactly like what you want to tell. Like, I'll, I'll be straight with you, uh, Jerry, because I'll, I'll, yeah. I want to help you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to trap you. I'm just yeah, giving. Yeah. I'm giving you two basic commandments. I am the Lord your God. That you will have no other gods beside me. Singular, no plural here. Yeah. Do not make any likeness of anything, any uh, nothing, whether it's in the heavens, whether it's in the sky whether it's in the sea, whether it's in the earth, nothing. Do not bow to them, do not serve them. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you and me, we're human beings, yes? Are we on the earth? Yes. Okay, if I make an image of a human being, am I making something, uh, an image of something that's on the earth? Yes. Okay, so am I breaking the second commandment? Yes. Okay. Why are we asking you not to? Because the Jews do not believe that God can. God became a man and came to the earth. They are not Trinitarian. They do not believe this. Yeah, but Christians do. The, 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 um, uh, I will come to this. The Muslims yeah. do not believe that God is a man that came to the earth and we do not worship anything in the creation. If, as a Christian, you worship something that is on the earth like a creation, man, tree, fish, star, moon, river, whatever it is, anything, but you worship Jesus, for example, then yeah. you are breaking the second commandment. Watch you. Do you understand? So what are we say? What now look at what happens. The Jews, they believe that God is not a man. God is not anything so, in the creation. Why? Because uh, of the fact, I'm just going to explain now, very little. Yeah, yeah. Just two sentences. The Jews believe that God is not like anything in the creation. Nothing. It says it clearly. Do not make any of these things. I, Lord, your Lord, your God, am a jealous. Um, I am the Lord, your God. Then you have no other gods before me. And that's singular. Before me, not before us, before me. And then he says, then second commandment. Do not make an image of anything on the earth. And do not bow down to any of these images. For why? Because I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Now the Christ, so if the Jews do not accept this, and the Muslims, we don't, we know God, we don't believe that anything in the creation is like uh, God. Why? Because God says in the Quran, there is nothing like unto him. So nothing, nothing we know, the trees, the stars, fits with the second commandment almost exactly. Nothing like unto him. And it tells us in the first chapter of the Quran, worship, you alone we ask for help, and you alone, uh, sorry, you alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. Clear, fits with the second commandment identically. The Christians come and say, no, actually, you know what, God came down as a man and became like something in the creation, and you, it's okay, you can worship him. Now the problem, there's a problem here, and the problem is, now you're in the same position as the Hindus who are worshipping the creation. They believe in one God, in a God who manifests in multiple avatars. And you are worshipping the creation, but you believe in a God and one avatar. I would say there's no difference. You're both breaking. You're both breaking the second commandment. Got you. Do you understand? But then, 
there there is a little difference of beliefs like you know in our religion like in the church as well after the mass we do say that one god forever and ever so we also believe in only one god like we don't divide them into three parts like we do consider the like them as one or no, I understand this. But if you speak yeah. to the if you speak to the Brahmins or you go to the priests, and if you you know there's a channel called Dawais, they had all of these priests who came on. They yeah, said, yeah, we, yeah. Believe, we believe in one God, but God can come as avatar. Do you understand? And yeah. he can help the people, or he can do this, or he can do that. And the Christians they, they will say the same. Look, we believe in one God, but he can come as an avatar. They won't use the word avatar, but this is essentially what they're saying. And he came, and he came, well, his job was he had to die for your sins. Now that's a there's other problems, but I'm just dealing with one thing now. The problem with both of these is what I would say to the Hindu is what I would say to you, as a Christian. Yeah. And I don't think you've moved a lot from many to one, but you're still in the same position in that you're worshiping something that's in the creation. But is it wrong? Like if, because we do worship the Father as well. Like we do pray to the Father just like you guys like do, you know. So, no, no. so I'll give me an example. This is the problem. What does what does the second commandment say? It says that do not bow to them. Yeah. Let me. I, I don't want to misquote it. Let me. Do you shall not bow down to them or serve them? <coughs> With so this is both types yeah. of. Of worship for I, the Lord your God, I singular, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Now, then, then you're asking me the question is, is it okay? I would say no, the commandment is directly saying, Don't bow and don't worship to these people because I am the one, I am the one. And what did, and, and you know, in the in, you know, the Lord's Prayer, have you come across the Lord's Prayer? Oh, yeah. Tell me like the Lord's we do have we do have multiple places to have like prayers yeah. like which one? Tell me the Lord's right. prayer, though. the one that Jesus t was teaching, according to the Bible. Which one was that? Like we have like different names for our different prayers. So so there's there's like, one really famous one called the Lord. How long have you been a Christian, Jerry? Uh it's been three years, three to four years. Three years. Three years. Okay, so let so let me uh, maybe I maybe I don't want to sort of put you under pressure. So let me tell you what the Lord's prayer is, and you will, when I say it, you will know it. Our Father yeah. who art yeah in yeah heaven, who art in heaven yeah yeah I know. This, hallowed yeah. be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is. You know this. As it is in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I now, know who taught this prayer according to the Bible? Jesus, peace be upon him. Yeah 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 right. He taught the people how to pray. And that's very. This is very important now. How to worship. Did he say anything apart from worshipping the Father in this? No. No. Did he say worship me? No. No. Our Father. Our what? Means your and mine. Who art in yeah. heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy, uh, thy will be done on earth as in your. Thy is your. It's, it's the old way of saying your. Your will yeah, be done. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And it goes on, it goes, forgive, uh, the last part of it, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Yeah. Some translations say, forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. So in that, there's two things. The prayer, the worship, Jesus is teaching now, the worship is only for the Father. And... If you want to forgive, if God is asking the Father, forgive us like we forgive people. Now I'm telling you, asking you a question now. If you are you are you a young man? You're married? You're not married? I don't know. Uh, I'm 20. So okay, I'm so you're a young man. So maybe yeah. maybe you're not married. If if someone wanted to, if someone wanted to, uh, if someone did something against me, and they said they came to me and they said, "Look, Imran, I need your forgiveness." And if I said to them, okay, here's my son, do whatever you like, you're forgiven. What would you say to that? Uh, this is a completely different scenario. Like you can compare this with that, you know. I am, I'm comparing because I think it's exactly the same. I can explain why. But first I want you to give you the concept because in the, the prayer that Jesus was teaching, he was saying, forgive us our sins. This is a, he's making dua. We call it supplication. He's praying. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
if I do something to you, what will you say to me? And I say, you know, you know, uh, Jerry, I'm really sorry. I did this. I wasn't. I didn't mean to do that. What What would you say? You'd say, Imran, uh, you're a reasonable guy. You say, Imran, don't worry. Uh, I forgive you. Got you. You wouldn't say, oh, here's my, here's my, uh, has to be a price. Here's my son. He's willing. Kill him, and then we're done. You wouldn't say this. So in the I'm, prayer, in the prayer, Jesus, then, but, Jesus but is actually you, teaching this. Yeah, but if so you see things, the story of Jesus, all, sorry, yeah. go on, go on. So if you see the story, guys, of Jesus, if I might just, just step in for a second. Um, I'm I'm going to leave now because I've had like four hours sleep. I'm actually I'm really tired. Is, actually, we'll close up. Uh, but I think it's yeah. one almost one now. We'll, we'll close up after yeah. this. And, and apologies to everyone else who's who's been waiting. But it is yeah. almost one. I have work in the morning as well. Yeah. But I just wanted to just, I want to, so Abbas, just 20, 10 minutes or so, please, if that's okay. Yeah? Okay. Sure. I just want to, I want to just, I want to just give you one other thing before you go. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen with you. Yeah. So that you can see this. And this is from your, um, I would say this is from, this is adding on to what I'm saying. So first that's of all, we don't want you to break the second commandment. The second thing is, and this is the, the, the people are going to find controversial. I'm going to give you this, okay? This is John. And I don't believe everything the Bible says, but because you're a Christian, I want you to understand this. It says, this is John uh, 16, chapter 12. And this is apparently Jesus speaking. Let me increase the size so you can see this. Um, I have much to say to you. Ah, sorry, I have much more to say to you. This is Jesus saying this. More than you can now bear. Yeah? He's talking to the people. So there's, Jesus is saying there's much more to tell you, but you can't bear this now. And then he goes on to say, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. When, so he's saying there's much more to tell you, but you can't take it now. You cannot bear it now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you onto all truth. So now Jesus is not talking about himself. He's saying, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you onto all truth. He will not speak on his own. So it's not going to come from him. He won't speak from himself. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is to come. He will speak only what he's hearing and he will tell you what is to come. He will prophesy. This is prophecy. He will glorify me. Because it is it's from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that And he goes on to say, all that belongs to the Father is mine. And that is why I say the Spirit will, you, will receive from me that will be made known to you. So what he's saying is, what was given to me by the Father will be given to him by the Father. So now so we have, so this so is the point. In, yeah. Go on, sorry. So where does it so say? why does it say the line, uh, all, the, all that belongs to the Father is mine? In, in this all scenario. that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So what he's saying is that everything I have is from the Father. Okay. That's why, so do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because Jesus is given things. Okay. Because Jesus says, I of my own self can do nothing. With the Spirit of God, I cast out spirits. Do you, know what you understand? So now, now, Jesus is talking about someone who has to, because Jesus is saying you have, there's much more to say, but you, you can't handle it at the moment. But he, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you onto truth. He will not speak on his own. I will only speak that which he hears and he will tell you what is to come. Do you know anything about the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Oh, uh, yes, he was the last messenger. As far as you know, how, how did it, how did the revelation come to him? I don't know the whole story behind that. So he received the revelation; it was spoken to him, and then the he, angel, right? The angels. That's right. The angel yeah. spoke to him, and then he recited it. Literally, it. he will not speak on his own, but he will speak only that which he says, and he will tell you what is to come. Watch it. Now, th this is, there are many more I can tell you, but I want you just, just, I'm going to summarize because we're closing up now. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's okay. So the, so the first point is, so you asked why, why become a Muslim? And I'm, I tell yeah. you now, the biggest reason is 
because you come away from worshipping the creation and you worship God alone without partners. I'm the Jews, the Jews you know, do you understand? So this is the biggest thing. Yeah. God does not want you to worship anything on the earth, in the sky, in the sea. He wants you to worship him alone without partners. I am the new Lord, I'm a jealous God. Second commandment. And God says right. in the first one, I am your I, I am your Lord. Yeah. There will be no other gods before me. So he is I, singular, yeah. Then he goes on to say, then we see that he teaches Jesus, according to the narrative, teaches people to pray to the Father. And then Jesus also speaks about someone to come after him. Now I'm going to leave you with one last verse, and I think we'll we'll leave it at that. Sorry, guys, to uh I want you to read this for me. Okay, let me just bring this up. And and uh, when you see this, you're going to uh, uh, this will really just sort of summarize it for you. Uh, okay, let me just bring this up for you now. Uh, let me just present, share the screen, and it's here. Share. It's coming on the screen now. Okay, so let me just yeah. get rid of this yellow box. So this is John 17. And we're really interested in verse 3, but let's read it from verse 1. After this, Jesus looked up. Uh, after, Jesus, after, say, after Jesus said this, he looked up towards heaven and prayed. So this is Jesus praying now. Yeah, yeah. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people. That's So you gave him this authority. And he, that he might give eternal life to the people. You have you given him, to all those you have given him. And then Jesus says, "This is now this is life eternal. What is life eternal? This is life eternal, that they may know you. Who is he okay. praying to? Father. Father. This Now this is life eternal. So let me get rid of all these, uh, gosh. All these things pop up when I don't want them to pop up. Let me just get rid of this 25% thing. Okay. Now this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus okay. Christ, whom you have sent. So, according to this, the only true God is is who the Father. Father. So now let's put all this together. First commandment: I, the Lord, I'm your Lord God. There is no other gods before me. Jesus says in John seventeen three, the only true God is the Father. Second commandment, do not worship anything in the sky, in the sea, in the, in, the, in the land. Do not make any images, do not make any idols. Do not serve them, do not bow to them. Third, third point, Jesus says, after me, there will be someone, because there are many things I must say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. But he, when the spirit of truth come, he will testify of me and he will uh, he will lead you on to all truth so now we're seeing now we're seeing the narrative here now this is now i don't believe the bible is all preserved etc but what you're seeing now is you're understanding what we are not calling you away from jesus peace be upon him we are not calling you away from judaism yeah. we are calling the jews to uh, accept jesus peace be upon him as the messiah because most things we believe jesus is the messiah yeah. We are calling the Christians to stop worshipping a human being who walked the earth because God told us not to worship anything that's on the earth. We're bringing you back to one theism. And what so is a one thing? Worship God alone. Just God alone. No yeah. images, no, no idols, nothing. God alone without partners. Now, this is the reason why I would say to you, become a Muslim, why Islam is true and why it's, Christianity is false. This is my simple answer. A long answer, but simple answer to that. One question, like if anyone, like for example, from Christianity wants to explore Islam, like wants to know the cultures, the teachings, how can I do that? Like how can I get started with that? Like you know. So the first, so if if you want, I will put our we'll put our email on the screen. Okay. Yeah. The first thing probably is just to just read the Quran. The Quran will start from the first page. It will tell you the very best. So this, the email is on the screen now. The, the reason for the email is we will send you the Quran for free. We will send you other literature for free. If you want to ask us any questions, you think they're embarrassing, you think you know they're hard to ask okay. them on, on a screen, okay. don't worry. Just ask us. 
uh, we have a great brother called Ayaz who, who, who handles a lot of the discussions on the emails. He will be able to help you. And if we'll all help if you want, feel free to come on and ask any questions from reading anything that you think that uh, this doesn't make sense or this sounds wrong. Come and talk to us. We're happy I to understand. Talk. But there is one more thing, you know, uh, it's kind of a rumor or something you can say, you know, people talk a lot about it, like especially in England or in other countries like Western countries that most of the genocides or homicides or any kind of terrorism is being uh, performed by the, you know, Islam people and on the name of uh, Allah. Why is that? Like, why, why does so this is, do that? So, yeah, this is not true. Uh, so there's a great, uh, we can discuss this another time because we're about to close. Okay. But let me give you one, just very one simple sentence. Yeah. You've heard of... Um, the Tamil Tigers, you're from India, right? Yeah. You've heard of Tamil Tigers? Yes. What were they doing? Um, breaking of temples, something like that. Like they breaking temples. Destructive temples, yeah. K k uh, suicide bombing? Oh, yeah, yeah. True. And now I'll ask you a question. Are they are they Muslims? Uh, no. No. So I'm not blaming Hinduism for this. I'm just yeah. giving you an example that the idea that this is from Islam, yeah. because some some... People who may say that they're Muslims are doing okay, it. Okay. It's, it's, it's just a, a false generalization. But we can discuss that, in depth because people have but, done but, studies. There's but, a professor that, who's done a study on all of the suicide bombings. But uh, apparently, cared about Muslims, and they and he showed that that's yeah, not. But, no, but the, 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 does the Almighty give them the right to do that? Like, does the no. the like, Quran says, for example, "Do not hurt yourselves. Do not hurt okay. yourselves." The Quran also says mm -hmm. that if you kill one do not person, kill yourself. Yeah. Do not, kill yourself. do not kill yourself. The Quran also says that if you kill one person, it's like you killed the whole of humanity. And if you kill and if you save one person, it's like you saved all of humanity. But it's kind of contradictory because there is one more guy. It's name his name is Zakir Nayak. If you know him, like he hmm. one of in one of his reel, he did say that you know if someone hurts you, do hurt the other person. Like it's called as capital punishment, something like that. In sure. The, so there's part. a difference between. So this is. A, so I think the way we're getting into off the topic now. But the, yeah. the key thing is, the state, the government, yeah. can apply punishments for crimes. Yeah. Now that's different from individuals taking the law into their own hands and doing terrible okay. things. Yeah. You understand? So we're dealing with systems versus individual desires and urges okay. and anger and. So Jerry, hope the good conversation. I hope you. I hope yeah. it was useful for you. Please yeah, come back. Really nice. The, the yeah. key thing is we're calling you back to the worship of God and calling you away from the worship of the creation. Got it. Okay. Nice to speak to you, Jerry. I wish you all the best. Okay. Uh, you too, all of you. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye, you. guys. Bye-bye. Brother Abbas, I'll uh, I'll leave you to uh, sum up. Sorry about that. Sorry. No, no. Uh, no, no, no uh, it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So, um, Ijaz, are you still there? You're wrong, master. Sorry, that was my Adam's family imperson impersonation. Alhamdulillah. Ijaz, why don't you, inshallah, um, close the stream today? Okay, I want to say uh, anything that we said, it was for Allah. Anything good that we said is from Allah. Anything wrong that we said is from ourselves. We want to thank each and every one of you in the audience that joined us today for today's stream. We Really appreciate your continued Patreon support. I uh, hope, inshallah, that we can continue to build a community of good intentioned people who are trying to spread the message of Islam so that the world can benefit, inshallah. Just my two cents. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. And with that, uh, my apologies to guests who we couldn't get on uh, that were waiting backstage, but it really, we've gone over sort of like. By about uh, nearly an hour now, but uh, and, and Doctor Ron, that's typical. I mean, it's subhanallah. Doctor Ron's got work. I'm sure Nazam, you're probably working as well. I don't know if you are or not. Uh, it's fine. I, I don't mind staying on. Till yeah, I know you, <laughs> Nazam. You, yeah. <laughs> you stay on till like six in the morning. Yeah, I'll be happy to stay on. I'll you know what, well, Nazam? If uh, you're willing, uh, I got uh, admin yeah. controls here. We could hypothetically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that note. We got the elders to guide us. Elders, what do you think? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a great time. To with, three, mashallah. I just came down with a, a, a sudden bout of tiredness, so let's not do it. Inshallah. Oh.
Uh, I think maybe we can we can in the future maybe start if we can a bit earlier. It was my fault today, really, but maybe we can start uh, even an hour earlier, maybe seven or something, and we can do a slightly longer stream if we have more guests. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Okay, just let me say to everybody, please remember us in your dua, inshallah, and see you all soon again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.